Hello. It's time for the the rule of King Pat today. Alternatively, the Pat Tatorship, which ironically sounds like potato. What's up, gang? First live stream I've gotten watched in two weeks. I've noticed you haven't been around much, Blue Wizard. Welcome back. I also found out, I think right before you, you were not around for a while, that... There are two blue wizards, which might be the most confusing fucking thing in the world. Y'all should, y'all should definitely all must have completely different names. Otherwise, it's, it's fucking confusing. Like, like if, like there's a guy in here, Mr. Boris Makarov, right? He's, he's been here since I started streaming, right? Well, I would, I would, I would like lose my shit if there was like Mr. Boris Makarov, like 65, and I'd be like, I, I'll never tell the difference. Like if I look over and like, oh, here, here's Lyanna the Assian, I'd be like, how, how could I ever know? How could I ever know? It's impossible. It's totally impossible. You can't tell the difference between people with similar names. Like I've na I've met a Patrick before in my life and like I'm like who are you? You're not me. I'm actually I don't know how I don't know how um so I'm 36, right? I don't know how uh David's, Jason's, Jennifer's, Jessica's uh fucking dealt with it. I don't know how y'all fucking didn't just die every day. There were like 75 Jennifers at my school. It was it was the it was like uh, literally unbelievable. Mics? Yeah, I didn't have too many mics. I had like two mics. I'm not very Patrick like someone says to the leprechaun looking little man. With red hair and blue eyes. Come on, man. If anything, despite despite not being Irish, I'm performatively Irish. Every single class I ever it had in had at least one other James. We had to call ourselves by our name plus last initial. So you're Jimmy B or Jimmy Jimmy C. See, if you have like a nick if you have a name that like nicknames easily, like you gotta go, you gotta go for like the nickname, right? It's it's a race to the nickname. Right? So if your name's James, you gotta make it to Jimmy. Oh, you gotta get to Jimmy first. Oh, Jimmy's the best. Oh. Cause Jimmy's either like, ah, Jimmy. Or like, man, fuck Jimmy. We're going to beat the shit out of Jimmy. And you want to be that good Jimmy. Ah, Jimmy's. Ah, oh, look at ah, oh, it's Jimmy's Jimmy. And, ah. I still think the funniest thing about my name. The funniest thing about my name. Is that. My mom had her heart set on a different name, and it was Luke. And so thank God we dodged that bullet. Um, but um, more importantly than that, there was an agreement between my mother and my father that Patrick was an okay name because my mom really liked it, and she really liked Patty. But there was one agreement. She said... 
She said to Patrick's father, she said, we'll name him Patrick, but only on one condition. And my dad's like, what? She's like, I really, really, really dislike the name Pat. So you promise me that we're not going to call him Pat. And my dad was like, absolutely. <laughs> um... And, um, you know, you know, that you know, the, like the stereotype of like white kids yelling at their parents cause, uh, we're not afraid of them. Uh, I never had that with my parents. Uh, I, I always, I, I was like a respectful child, except when my mother would call me Patty, I would lose my fucking mind. I was like, no mom. Oh, Call me Pat. Patty's for losers. Ugh. Call me Pat. She's like, I'm not calling you Pat. Your father told me I didn't have to call you Pat when you were born, and I'm never going to call you Pat. I'm like, uh, and I lost that battle. I, I, I 100% lost that battle uh, because not only... Not only does my mother still call me Patty every time she calls, um, my wife calls me Patty Cakes. Like she, she, Paige put out like a text message from her phone, and like everybody saw that in in Paige's phone, my name's Patty Cakes. <laughs> I've lost. I lost. Oh well. Paige will sometimes call me Patrick. Yeah, but that's a bad sign. I don't know. I'm I'm a I'm a believer. I'm a strong believer in uh, nicknames as mandatory. Um, I don't I don't believe in people's full names. Uh, I don't believe in it. Um, <laughs> so uh, any any name over one syllable is too long. way too long too long like wooly have you guys noticed that like 99% of the time I call wooly wools have you not noticed that Your, your full name's three letters long. The fuck am I going to do with that? That's tough. That's tough for nickname purposes. Right? You could just go by the letter. You could be somebody walking around like F. You know, there's... I'm trying to think. You know, you know who never gets a nickname ever? Frank. I've known like two Franks. And they were just like, hey, Frank. And they were both... Yeah, but Frankie's too long. Frankie's longer than Frank. And both both the Franks I knew were like Frank the Tank. It's like when you name somebody, somehow like the, the essence of that name like pools into them and either makes them fit the name or reverse the name. Right? So like I would expect Frankie to be like a beef man or like a four and a half foot tall cute girl. No in between. No in between. <sighs> Chet, what the fuck does Chet stand for? What is Chet? Is that like Chet is Chet? Is this some trashy, like, Southern American thing? Is that dangerously cheesy? Chester? It's got to be Chester, right? Chethany. Oh, it's Chethany, right. Chethany. Now nah, the trashy American thing is Richard becomes dick. I don't know, man.
I've known I've I've known uh 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 I've known guys named Richard that didn't go by Rick uh, by Dick. They went by like Ricky. But they were all grandpas at the time, so. Dick only meant penis after Richard Nixon. Shut up. Get out of town. Rich? Oh, I can see Rich. Yeah, that makes sense. Robert has the most nickname. Okay, there's Rob. There's Bert. That's it. That's all I got for Robert. What do you got? Bob. Oh, Bob. Bob's so good. Oh, man. Oh. Okay. King Regal says that Bob is short for Robert and William. I'm, I want to fight whoever decided that some nicknames can be fucking born out of words that have no letters that that mix like bill from william where'd the b come from motherfucker robert already has a b it makes sense Wait, Henry and Hank are, like, friend names? How? Where'd the A come from? I hate it. That's, that's... I just realized that Billy D. Williams' name is William D. Williams. William Dilliam Williams. Names are stupid. Ugh. Names are dumb. Does anyone out here have a cool name? I just have a pretty normal name. I haven't met many Patricks. I've met two Patricks. One was cool. The other was less cool. Cool Pat. I was like, hey, cool Pat. Actually, no, the, the Pat that I knew that was cool is that, like he became Black Pat, but they didn't want to call me White Pat because that's weird somehow. So that's how I became Angry Pat. That and we knew a guy named Angry Dave, but then Angry Dave graduated. And so there needed to be a new angry guy. But then Black Pat didn't want to be Black Pat anymore. He just wanted to be Pat. So then he got to just stay Pat. And then I kept the angry pat. I'm like, but I was here first. This is bullshit. <laughs> like this is this is bullshit. In my 14 static, we have two Nigels. I'm one of them, and we're both black? What? I don't mean to be rude, but Nigel is not a name I would normally associate with the black person. And the fact that there are two of you in the same... That's crazy. That's legitimately wild. Eric's. Oh my god, I knew so many fucking Eric's. Oh god. There was like Eric C and Eric D and Eric L and I think there was a fourth one. Oh man. What's what's the new name that's that's overdone? What's the is it Jackson? <laughs> Oh no! Oh god! Oh, Traden. <laughs> Braxton. Oh, Aiden. Oh my god! Oh, everyone's everyone's going nuts. All right. 
Don't name your kid after a fictional character that doesn't have their story arc done. Uh, unfortunately, oh man. Okay, don't name your kid Khaleesi, right? You know that one? And that how that fucking really, really fucking blew up in people's faces? Um, do you want to hear the ultimate? The absolute fucking ultimate? The ultimate is Atticus. Okay, so To Kill a Mockingbird comes out like 50 fucking years ago. And Atticus Finch is like a heroic lawyer defending an unjustly accused black man and a bunch of a bunch of lawyers name their kids Atticus a bunch of black folk name their kid Atticus because like Atticus is like a fucking hero and then like 60 years later a sequel comes out in which Atticus fucking gets old and moves to like a gated community and becomes like a fucking uh, 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 card carrying member of some like racist community group and they're like 40 year olds named Atticus that are like, what the fuck is this? You can't do this. It's not like the fucking, it's not like my parents named me like waiting for the next season. <laughs> like, oh man, that sucks so bad. <laughs> Uh, all right. Oh, well. You ever know? Oh, man. Mm. <sighs> Name your kid Naruto. You know, you know. You know there's a Naruto running around there, out there right now. You know they're out there. You know they're like, Eight or nine. <sighs> oh, I did say running. Oh, man, that's funny. Uh, there's Boruto. There's not Boruto. Shut up. No one would ever name it a Boruto. No one would ever Boruto a Boruto. It's impossible. You could never do it. Snorlax more like fucking Borlax. Anyway. My sister named her daughter after the author of To Kill a Mockingbird before that sequel book came out. Yeah, the, the to set go uh to set a watchman is like the most depressing thing in the world. Uh I forget the lady's um I forget the lady's name uh, who wrote To Kill a Mockingbird. I really should. She's a famous author. But uh, Harper Lee, uh supposedly uh Go Set a Watchman, there's a lot of controversy over it because she is like highly highly dementiaed out. And the authority of the reality of the book is in direct question as to whether or not she wrote it 50 years ago, she wrote it when she was losing her mind, whether or not she wrote it at all, um, or her, her relatives just wanted to fucking get one last one out before, uh, you know, with her name on it. Let's just ignore it as not canon, shall we? As a longtime Lovecraft fan, I welcome Harper Lee fans to the death of the author club. I think I think Lovecraft is maybe the most interesting discussion to be had about death of the author because, um, and I've gone into this on the show before, um, Lovecraft was a special kind of death of the author because... Lovecraft, you know, you look back in time and you're like, were, peace, were people like racist fucking dirtbags back in the day? Oh, yeah. By our standards, everybody, everybody's toxic. But you have to uh, you have to usually look at them for the time Were they progressive for the time, even though they look like dog shit now or were they, uh, you know, whatever. Right. Lovecraft was racist in his time. Like, in the era of Lovecraft's era, he made other racists uncomfortable because he was so crazy. Um, and he was so scared, so scared of Chinese and black people that he invented the idea of monsters from space as an explanation. And a lot of that shit's great. 
Um, and then he married a Jewish girl and moved to New York, and then uh, she fucking uh, got rid of a lot of that, and he toned it the way the fuck down, and then died. So, like, like yes, a, a, a Jewish lady from the city met H.P. Lovecraft and said, I can fix him, and was doing a decent job of it. And then he died. Like there's a there's there's a there's like the the uh, the character arc, like kind of stopped. The main thing is that he moved to New York, because uh, he lived in some he lived in some shithole rural area uh, with his mother, like alone for like most of his life. Um, so like. He never saw any of the people he was writing about. All he had was, like, the people around him telling him. And then he moves to New York City, and it's like, oh, well, yeah, okay. Turns out! Would you believe it? <sighs> oh, yeah, he, he finally had to come to terms with being Welsh. Yeah, he was insane about being Welsh. Oh... Uh. Oh, those sheep fuckers. Is that, is that myth even true about stealing the sheep and fucking the sheep? Or is that just some historical fucking anagram about getting one over on the British? Because it's a fun story that, like, sheep stealing is, like, punishable by hanging. But, like, fucking a sheep is, is punishable by a couple days in the stocks. And so if you got caught with the sheep, you just say you were going to fuck it. Like, that's a really fucking funny story. <laughs> uh, I choose to believe, yeah. Okay, good. All right, let's thank some people. Let's thank at least one people. Hopefully you're all happy with your names. <sighs> Speaking of, let's thank... Isaiah Omega, Piper Rain, Sticker Fan, Shadow Man, and Resident Fan, who all subscribe. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Aoko kicked in the $5. Thanks, Aoko. Hey, Pat, do you have any interest on playing Katana Zero in a few days, for example, on Saturday? Um, is the DLC finally coming out? Because that DLC is years late. Like, it's like Hollow Knight Silk Song levels of late. Like, crazy late. Answer my question, Aoka. Because, I mean... <sighs> Take it, Breezy sub. Thanks, Breezy. Polka fan kicked in a sub. Hey, Pat, keep up the good work. We're going to make you cry tonight. No, you're not. If, listen, if the peasantry or the nobility revolt too hard, I will simply poison all of the water. I would rather rule over a kingdom of skeletons than not rule. Resident fan sub. Thanks, resident fan. Yes, finally, I can live out my fantasy of destroying the lives of the little people. Good for you. Uh, Astro pup sub. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Evil emu sub. Hey, man, I proposed to my girlfriend last week. Uh, and said yes. And she said yes. Yay! I also took your advice and did not vomit. Thanks for that tip. Good for you, man. Good for you. Congratulations. Saying Shoto subbed. Oh, shut the fuck up. <sighs> hey, Pat, why'd the bicycle fall asleep in the movies? It was too tired. This doesn't even make any fucking sense. Bicycles can't fall asleep. It's a bicycle. Shut up. Thank you for the sub. Raw... <laughs> Roaring Chris sub says beep boop clickety sub button oink. Thanks, man. Bletz Magad subbed. Hey, hola, Pat. Would you fight every other Patrick in the world to establish your reign as Pat Savage? No, fuck that. I couldn't even beat one Patrick. I might not even be able to beat clone Patrick. Depending on if you come out of the clone booth rejuvenated. I'm tired. Um, that's a fighting fighting the other people with your name is a young man's game. I'm too tired. 
Forlorn Carton sub. Thanks, Forlorn Carton. Appreciate it. Biggest Dickus the Fourth kicked in five hundred bits. Thank you, man. Just here to tell you to go watch John Wick Chapter Four. Thank you. Uh, I'm actually trying to convince Paige to watch John Wick Chapter One. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Bailey Gaming kicked in a sub. Thanks, Bailey. Hey, Pat. Forty months feels like yesterday. A sub. Love to you and Peaches. Thanks for the entertaining stream. Also, shouldn't be fr shouldn't the French part of you hate being a king or king related activity? Um. Well, there's there's here's the thing, right? I hate monarchies. Uh, I hate monarchies on their face. I hate uh, I hate the idea of a divine right or a system of governments in which, um, like, the system says bluntly, yo, that guy's better than you, right? It makes me so mad. It makes me crazy mad. Um... But if I'm on top of the system and no one's better than me, that's that's fine. That's okay. Um, and that's why we need to kill Superman. Uh, every dictatorship and monarchy is a terrible idea unless it was me in charge, at which point it's a great idea because I am, uh, much smarter and betterer than all of those other guys. Uh, two hit good sub to say cheers. Thanks, man. No bad guy sub. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. My best friend and I thought about RF4 Remake. Not only does the black goop resemble Ouroboros, but the opening crawl also never goes Umbrella was finished. Which makes me think RE5 Remake to create a better through line to Tricell and Modern Umbrella. Yeah, it does make sense. Um, yeah, have you noticed that in RE4 Remake, the black water is never explained? Um, the only creature that actually fires it out is Salazar. So it, it might be like all of that goo might be his. Oh, the final boss does kind of use it too. Yeah, you're right. Oh, and the head eating Ganado spit it out. Okay, so it's Plaga's juice then. All right, it's coconut water. <sighs> Sir Tim Bob kicked in a sub. Thanks, Tim Bob. Hey, Pat, after playing RE4, what's worse, being stabbed in the bathroom to death or your killer asking why you took all your clothes off just to go to the bathroom and can't defend yourself because you're dying? Um, I don't like being stabbed. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I just, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of being stabbed. Uh, Amcha kicked in a sub. Hopes all is well, Pat. Everything's going great. You ever have one of those, like, periods in your life where everything's smooth and you're like yeah okay well i'm having one of those it's it's nice no okay well okay well things uh, thank everything's going well thank you I got weird. Sorry. Um, uh, Uncle Scrafty sub. <laughs> Hello today. Uh, have you been following any of the Tekken 8 character trailers? Everyone's looking super detailed. I'm excited for the next one. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Keep up the streams. Uh, I've been following the Tekken 8 uh, trailers. And um, if Virtua Fighter is going to be dead, um, Tekken. God, I'm so fucking... Okay. So, my favorite fighting game is Virtual Fighter. Um, and, uh, uh, fuck. Uh, and my second favorite fighting game, um, uh, was Street Fighter. And then my third favorite fighting game was Tekken. And Tekken also has the the only the, the, the two of them have like the uh, are the like the dead last to the party, and so like I fully expect 
I fully expect fucking Tekken 8 to just like netcode itself to death and suck shit. And then I'll be sad. I can't do a Korean backdash, but I can be really annoying with King. Myeld kicked in a sub. Thanks, Myeld. Hey, Pat, happy 41 months. When's the next trash stream? I got a Rumbleverse vid to send you. Uh, Saturday. So toss it, go to my pinned tweet and toss it there. Shen kicked in a sub. Thanks, Shen. Hoping for the 6.4 raids to have the final boss be Genova. Given how close to Sephiroth, Genova, the mother son plot lines have been so far in the quest line. Um, they have actually gone. Uh, Yoshi P at the PAX panel said that there is FF7 remake influenced stuff coming down the pipe. Like, not like, hey, I'm Cloud, but like, you know, like how you, we would fought bosses from other games and that kind of thing. So maybe we'll maybe we'll be dealing with Genova. That'd be cool. Akami kicked in a sub. Hey, Pat, did you hear Borto's ending? Everyone get ready for Borto Shabubin. <laughs> sure. Sure. I misread it. He didn't type it wrong. I, I misread it. Uh, Winter Titan kicked in a sub. Says, look at fit these days, Pat. Thank you. Mildly eccentric sub. Money for the orb, man. Thank you. That's me. Robo Token kicked in a sub. Says, genuine question. Do you think Roly and Reggie are going to play Mass Effect Andromeda after Mass Effect 3? Absolutely they will. Anything to avoid things like Resident Evil 4 Remake or Final Fantasy 16. Just got to make sure to just keep on trucking with that old shit. Just right through. Right through. What do you think the over-under is that the Final Fantasy IX remake gets announced during the FF9 playthrough? What do y'all think? I'm thinking it's like 90% likely. And motherfucker, I will laugh! I will laugh! That's not how over-under works. Shut up! <laughs> Oh, I will laugh. Whew. Is that a rumor circulator right now? So the NVIDIA, so uh, Quantris, uh, there was an NVIDIA leak um, a long time ago, like two, three years ago. And it was a huge list of games. And like 95% of them have come out. Like... Like it, it, it was the biggest realist leak ever. Like there's, there's FF nine remake on that list. There's final fantasy tactics remake on that list. There's, um, uh, fuck there. Like mirror's edge RTX was on that list. You know, stuff like that. Dragon's dogma two was on that list. <sighs> Super Blah kicked it in us up. Thanks, Super Blah. Beatings will continue until morale improves. That's right, you fucking peasants. Woo! Enjoy your breads. Uh, I'm gonna. I like how everyone's like, Pat, you seem like a pretty nice guy, but the instant you get control in a management situation in a video game, you become like a fascist dictator psycho. And what can I say? What can I say? Sometimes the orphans need to go in the furnace. Uh, Ilock kicked in a sub. Thanks, man. How does RE4 run? My computer's getting on in years. Uh, incredible. And uh, it runs pretty consistently throughout the entire game. So go download the chainsaw demo. The chainsaw demo, uh, if you can run the chainsaw demo even half okay, the regular game actually runs better than the chainsaw demo. Gilroy Goldblood kicked in a sub. Been having a blast with RE4 Remake. Prototype arm crowds are kicking my ass hard because I used up my knife earlier in the fight. Cheers, Pat. Give, give love. Will do. Will do. Hacks Metatron kicked in the $5. Thanks, man. Can you please play Pentiment? Shocked you haven't tried it so far because it's so up your alley as a fantastic obsidian game. I got a lot going on, man. Iceman sub. Thanks, man. This game rules. Pretty sure it got its inspiration from a board game called King's Dilemma. I don't know that board game. 
but thank you. And Scattercat kicked us up. Thanks for giving my wife and I so many laughs. Love watching you and Paige. Why, thank you. We got a Devil May Cry coming down the pipe uh, later this week. Though I'm going to have to have Paige practice her combos because uh, she has not pl actually touched or played Devil May Cry uh, in like three weeks or two weeks. Whatever it is. She needs to get her skills back up. All right. Let's figure out how the video game works, gang. Let's figure it out. <sighs> Hold on. Wait, why is no sound? Hold on. Huzzah! How do we join? I don't know. We'll figure it out. So I'm I'm connected. So that's that's I'm connected up there. That's fine. Uh, I'm gonna go customize my monarch that looks a lot like Paige actually that's pretty funny uh, Can I hair let's go hair Hold on beard. Let's go beard first big manly beard that I have There we go and red there you go Not sure about that hat, but we'll work. We'll work on it well, Where's the hat? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're getting there. Uh, purple? No, purple's not gonna go good with my hair. We'll go with this pointy hat. Oh! Oink! 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 oink. oink. Thanks, Thanks for us, gorgeous. gorgeous. Really, really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Oink. oink. No hat? I could go no hat. Hold on. Give me that red. Is there like a... Oh, there! Okay! Can I put the hat on and it'll still look bald? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it. Do you need to see the thing on the stream feed? Just say you need to give extent. Do you... What? Do you see the thing on the stream feed that says you need to give the extension access? Do I? Because I don't... I don't need that. Do I? You, I think you do. Yeah, it's for chat, bro. Also, I'm pretty sure you can... Oh, I add to my channel? Wait, do I have to... Do... But, uh, but I did add it to my channel. It is configure. No configuration is necessary. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done on my end. I'm done on my end. Besides, you, I think you join with chat commands. Anyway, I want a hat. I want to keep this, this fancy hat. Okay, so I'm going to keep it. Now I wanna, I wanna, ooh, I like that. Ooh, I like that, ooh! Ooh, I like these. Ooh, I like these a lot. I like this. I have a little stick. I like, I like the, the idea that I have a little stick. Uh, and I, and I get to point it at people and be like, D -d Dungeon! To the dungeon with you! With my little stick. I like it. Click on the other regions. Yeah, I'm aware. The other regions, uh, the other regions, like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, these are the defaults, but this is who you losers would be playing as. Okay? I'm not going to be playing as those losers. Okay? I'm going to be playing as this winner. I'm the monarch. I'm the king. Y'all, y'all go fuck yourselves. I have a little, yeah, the stick. What is this? What am I looking at? Oh, it's my little mouth. Oh no, here look, I'm, I'm having a good day. No, I'm having a bad day. Uh, ruling is hard. Mmm. Uh, ruling is so hard. Oh, uh, mmm, terrible. Should I have a monocle? Or an eye patch? Ooh, eye patches are good, but no, let's not go with that. Eyeballs. I have blue eyes. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm so tired of ruling the kingdom. Oh, it's so difficult. Oh. And I have a tiny little, tiny little scar there from back when I, when I got the kingdom and I did it. I did it so good. Okay. I think, I think we're good. I think we're good with this. I think we did it. What's this? I, want these. I think we did it. There's, there's me. I'm going to start a new dynasty. The monarch's name is going to be Pat. The dynasty name. 
Um... There we go. <laughs> no, uh... Stratson, that's the one. You're right. I'm going to go with he, him, because I want to be a king. And begin. Okay, losers. Are we going to play this game with my friends? No, you're all shits. We're going to play on Twitch. All right. I want three regions. We got barons, brash rural lords, Famous for their belligerence and hunting. Uh, Chiefs of the North. Honorable warriors. Renowned for pagan. Religion and prowess of combat. We got Counts of the East. Ruthless aristocrats steeped in secrecy. Allegations of forbidden ritual are unproved. Okay, I'm going to throw these guys in there. They're cool. Grandees of the South. Passion duelists. Known for the strict adherence to honor, etiquette, and the ninth god. And then we got Patricians. The Patricians. <laughs> Uh, wealthy seafaring merchants noted for their cleverness, skill in negotiation, and ornate masks. Okay, we'll throw in the patricians. Right, okay. Uh, who else do you guys want? You get a third one. You want the barons? You want the- I'm seeing a lot of barons. I'm gonna get the barons. So, bop, bop, bop. There you go. Red. Let's begin. All right. Type join exclamation point join. And I believe your pronoun. And you'll you'll lo you'll log Oh my fucking god. Wow, it, this goes, huh? Oh, you shit asses. Oh, this is going to be a fucking mess. Oh, no. How the fuck do you tell what team you're on? I'm sure it'll load you in eventually. Oh, no. I have so... I have... I have very little faith in all of you. Oh, fuck. I gotta wait till y'all are finished loading in. It looks like you're mostly done. I'm gonna give y'all a couple more minutes just to, you know, come on in. Looks like it's it's evening you guys out. All right. Oh wow, you y'all okay. Oh, people can keep joining once you've started? Oh, that's great. That's super. All right, let's begin. By the way, I've never played this. Don't know how to play it. King of the Castle. Oh, I'm me. Hmm. Acquire an heir to complete your ambition. Got it. Baby. Your first reign will likely end in disaster. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Keep an eye on the region schemes. If they pass all their stages, they'll win the game. I don't want you guys to scheme. Be careful of the region's defiance. If it gets too high, the regions may rebel. To win, pass all three stages of your scheme. So this is for the nobles, huh? Each stage requires you to get stats at certain levels, which are effective in votes. Nobles voting. How you vote's up to you. For your region scheme to stop other schemes or for the good of the kingdom. And the nobles' rebellions. If your defined stat's high enough, you can rebel. This pauses your scheme and is risky, unless you have low military. Events. Each season, you'll get three events. Click on one. Okay, before we leave... Okay, so I'm the capital. 
And then these losers are to the east. These losers are to the coast. And these losers are in the march. I have $3,000. And I have five stability and authority. You guys... Oh, I'm seeing that patricians have excellent trade. The counts have good farming. And the barons are nice overall. And you guys are at a nice one defiance. Excellent. Oh, oh, I can scroll. Uh-oh. Air and ambition. I must require... I get a guy... I gotta get an heir. A spouse is useful, but not necessary. You don't need a spouse to get a baby. You just need a hole. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, uh oh. all right the mon I'm, I'm i'm role playing as a lord everybody shut up monarch must acquire winning the game complete your ambition before a scheme or rebellion usurps you or before you lose all of your authority treasure and stability uh this is your monarch the streamer's character they'll appear in most stories but not all Kingdom stats. These are kingdom stats. If any of them are zero, the game will just end. Region. These are the region stats. Stats determine what events. Defiance. If defiance is higher than authority and stability, region can trigger a rebellion. This will pause their scheme and is risky if military is low. You can scroll through the full list of nobles and their wealth here on the noble list. So, for example, I could click this noble list and see... Oh, my God. Look, oh, you all have individual wealths! You all have individual wealths. Oh, wow. Interesting. You all have cash money. Spymaster. Hey, girl. The first few years of your reign are the most difficult. You're new and unproven. The council of nobles will scheme against you, hoping to kick you off the throne and put their own puppet claimant in your place. These fools couldn't scheme their way out of a paper bag. Better kings than you have been toppled by their treacherous nobles, majesty. To defeat their schemes, you must secure an heir and prove that you're worthy of the crown by completing an ambition. My success is, my question is this. When you die, how do you hope the kingdom will remember you? Mm. As the greatest king who ever fucking lived. You're the type that lot, build lots of statues of yourself, aren't you? Maybe I am a little bird. I suggest over the next few years to focus on improving your authority as much as possible. Once you have an heir, I'll return to discuss how your ambition is progressing. Good luck. Okay. Council introduction. Now that you're king, first duty is to meet with the Council of Nobles. Your nobles hail all across the kingdoms, the desolate east, the wealthy coast, and of course the bleak march. <sighs> Who do I introduce myself to first? I'll, I will introduce myself to the uh, Counts of the East. Ooh, a premium noble. This is, oh, this is a player that has bought the game. They can set their customizes and gain access to special outfits and they will appear more often. Hey, Mitch Tech. I guess you bought the game, huh? Mitch Tech will be running the Counts of the East. <laughs> An honor to make your acquaintance. May you escape the doom that befell your predecessor. What the fuck? Hey. Come on. That's my dad. All right, patricians of the coast. Hey, it's Altiz and Rees. Hey, pleasure, Mag August Majesty. Hope to see our kingdom prosper and grow wealthy under your reign. That's a cool looking dude, dude. And the barons. It's Monster Kills! Hey, Monster Kills. Hell and well met, my liege. Under your liegeship, we'll whip this kingdom into shape, huh? And with that, our introductions are done. The council hall immediately fills with raised voices as the nobles argue with each other and jerk each other off into buckets. You sigh and sit back, wondering where your bucket's going to show up. Is this what the council's like? No wonder your father told you to avoid the throne. 
Oh, where's my bucket? Your, but no, your your bucket is full. Can you get a new one? No, no, you can't. Also, are you? What is this? What is this? What are these bombs next to your names? Predicted? Predicted counts, barons. Predicted. I'm here for the money. What are these next to your names? Betting who went. This sounds fun. You may actually have scheduled your coronation to take place in a week. Shouldn't I be giving the orders? Of course, but to delay any longer would make the nobles restless. And when the nobles are restless, they take their daggers and look for the nearest bat. Well, wouldn't want that, I suppose. As is tradition, council will decide what happens at your coronation. But it's my coronation! This isn't an absolute monarchy, your majesty. Everything has to be run past a council vote, even this. Shall we call the nobles in? I suppose. I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of having a blast already. This seems like a fucking great setup for a stream game. Certain choices will change things. Some choices that do so will indicate this change here. Not all choices that change stats have these indicators, and they will not show the region affected. These are the voting, the upcoming choices your nobles will vote on. Each of these may change stats in some way. The monarch can change how his vote is run with a law. May use one law per vote. Try using your veto on one option you dislike. When the vote opens, nobles will vote using the command vote followed by the choice letter, such as void A, B, C, D. The monarchs may close the vote at any time after all nobles have voted or the timer has hit zero. All right, fuckers. We have a lavish parade with jugglers and fountains of wine, inviting foreign dignitaries to show off our fucking wealth. Throw the king into the river. Or the nobles must put on a vast banquet for the king. I can select the preferred. And I can also veto. Okay. vetoed commence the vote losers <sighs> oh y'all oh, looks like we're inviting some foreign dignitaries Sorry about that river. Well, the, I'm not gonna bother remaining the vote. This seems, uh, Vito has a cooldown. Shut up. Anyway, we're gonna continue. Voting has closed! Let's invite some foreigners and show off how fucking gold we are at. So, uh, sorry about the 1,800 gold. Actually, it's only 900 gold, because we're going to get 900 wealth out of it. The chat shows how much by what and what by. Treasury is now 1,200. Wait, why did I lose 1,800? Where's my 900 wealth? Did you, wait. Oh, you got the money? You didn't do anything! That's mine! Dignitaries arrive from all corners. It's only appropriate you show off. A trained eagle drops a ruby encrusted crown on top of your head as you stand on a golden podium. The odd crowd includes such influential figures as the Dukes of Saul, the Princess, sorry, the Princess of Tavalin, even a pearl bearer from Atesh. Lucrative trade deals are struck at the evening's feast. Trade is now opulent on the coast, prosperous, dynamic. Some patricians' wealth has increased. Well, I hope you guys are happy with your wealth. You're welcome. Only the Grand Pensionary of Kurth is not in attendance. The Republic, after all, is fundamentally opposed to the concept of monarchy. Now that we've played all the events, let's advance and end the season. How the fuck do I do that? Oh, here it is. Each region will now vote for one of three randomly selected schemes. Schemes are made of three stages. Passing all, th wait, uh, three stages with specific stat requirements. So one of you might have like a trade requirement or, you know, a military requirement. 
Uh, passing all three schemes places the regents claiming on the throne, winning the game. So you guys can win, huh? My fellow counts. In ancient times, the East was on its own proud kingdom. We can win back those days of glory. But not while false king Pat wears the crown. Traitors. Voting is open! What scheme should the counts pursue to overthrow their king? And put Marcella on the throne? Hmm. Interesting. Well, it looks like possession is going to win. You're going to lower your own defiance. <laughs> hey, thanks. Counts plant. What the fuck? Summon a demon to possess the king. Putting him totally under their control. First, they must lull the king into a false sense of security. That's not what I thought that meant. Vance, they must lower their defiance to four or less in two seasons, but you're starting at one. Fellow patricians of the coast, my claim to the throne is far more legitimate than that of King Pat. Something must be done. What do you guys want to do, patricians? Remember, you don't just have to beat me, you also have to beat the others. Okay, looks like you're all going for Monopoly. Yeah, okay. See, you should go for Intimidation, because raising the other's defiance would cock block uh, the counts. But okay, Monopoly it is. Uh, Monopoly. Raise their own trade, which you're already at eight. Patricians plan to privatize the entire damn kingdom. First, they must build up their industry. To advance their scheme, patricians must raise their trade to five in four seasons. But you're already at eight. We have barons of the march. Back down from a fight. Never. I know what you'll do, what it takes me to put you, me, your rightful queen, on the throne. Let's see, you can modernize, you can propaganda, or you can gunpowder. Yo, we got 412 nobles in here. That's that's a lot. What percentage of that? Because usually chat participation on these kinds of things is usually pretty low. So what do we got? We have 989 people, we got 412 nobles. That's about half. You're gonna modernize. No, you're gonna gunpowder. You motherfuckers, you better not blow me up in my fucking house. You better not Guy Fox my bullshit. Gunpowder. The Republic of Kurth has a substance called gunpowder. With enough of that, the barons could take over. Oh, you're just gonna... Sensible king would never allow one region to hoard such a thing. To do so secretly, the barons must ensure their trading partners don't fear the king's wrath. To advance their scheme, the barons must lower authority to four or less, which is going to be really easy. Here you can review their, their, their fucking schemes. When you have an heir, this will appear on the right of my page. If your reign ends abruptly, the nobles will vote for the next monarch. This votes between the two regions with the highest stats and your heir. So, these are basically all guaranteed. So that's scary. Let's end the season. Mm. All right. We've got three things going. We got a fishy wedding, we got the honor guard, and we got a theft. Let's go down 
to the theft in the march. Hey, it's Baron Rain Mage. Highness, this is an outrage. I demand justice. Last week, Count Gilliam Jaeger shook my hand as a supposed show of reconciliation and stole my family's lucky ring in the process. Drakeoff's bones. Nonsense. Rummage through your drawers and I'm sure you'll find that ring. You motherfuckers are fighting amongst yourselves. Highness, a feud has stood between our family for centuries. Gilliam Jaeger's ancestor has left my ancestor tied to a rock in the woods for the wolves to consume. Why'd you all do that? It's because their ancestors poisoned our well and killed half our household. Enough. I know Gilliam Jaeger stole my priceless ring. It bears the march great luck and bounty. My dear nephew is to wear it when he marries. Mmm. You know what? I'm I would like the chancellor to investigate personally. I love that you're all fighting amongst yourselves. I was like, how am I going to win this? And then I realized, oh, you're actually being pitted against each other. That's just delicious. Fuck. <clears throat> Come on, guys. Send them to investigate. Oh, man. Look at these votes. The patricians are demanding the arrest. Oh, well, I guess. Oh, 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 oh. Leave it to themselves, huh? Ooh, 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 ooh. What's gonna happen? Y'all done? Y'all done? Oh, who could know? Well, the voting tied. Guess I get to pick the answer. <laughs> Arrest that bitch. Hey, guess what? I tricked you all into choosing the option I wanted. Your defiance is now insolent. Ooh. 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 Good good job possessing my shit now, losers. Come on, out you go. As the watch drags him out, the council hall falls in the sun silence. The parents watch with satisfied glances. Oh, the march is now loyal. And my my authority is up. I don't want Defiance up. I want these motherfuckers' Defiance up. Oh my god. Count of the East are fucking dumbasses. Oh my god. Hey, let's go to the Honor Guard. Now that you're king, you need personal protection. I could plunge my sword in your heart right now, could I not? I'd like to see you try. Is it your imagination? Is your martial stu- I full wry chuckle. In any case, she quickly hides it. You need an honor guard to keep you safe. Unfortunately, this is a political decision. What are my options? Each region offers a selection of elite guards. Counts with Knights of Order of the Drowned- Oh, fuck, that's so cool. The patricians with champion gladiators from the arena. And the barons offer a battle-hardened squad of veteran soldiers. Think carefully, your majesty. These guards' loyalties will be divided between you and your region. Of course, you could just hire fire and foreign mercenaries. They'd be loyal to coin above all. Tell me about the Eastern Knights. 
The Drown Rose are highly respectable. They'll understand palace etiquette. But it's been years since they fought a battle. They mostly write poems. <laughs> Tell me about the gladiators. A gang of low-born crooks turn themselves into celebrities through their skill of chopping other people to bits. Vain and selfish. Skill in battle is undeniable, but can you trust them? Tell me about the veterans. Soldiers have fought more battles than they've had hot dinners. They'll be uncouth, no doubt, but they won't adapt well to life in the palace. But they're loyal, tough as nails. What foreign mercenaries do you suggest? Band of fearsome fighters from the Tatterlands called the Battle Bitten Brethren. Body got work, but they're costly. Hiring foreigners will be considered an insult. Hey, I just have a quick question, guys. Um, I'm aware that the Count's want defiance to be low, and the Patricians want trade to be high. Uh, the Barons want military to be high, I believe. Which ones do the Barons want? They want my authority down. Wow, y'all fucking... Oh, that's what the red here means. Wow. Y'all are losing losing hard. I've made my decision. So defiance up down. Hmm. I'll have the Eastern Knights make arrangements. You're grumbling, and the other guys are a little mad. See, guys? See? See? You're not, you're not, come on. My poem boys. They're all extremely pale and polite. The commander introduces herself with a floor bow before reading a poem she's written. See? Yeah, I help the counts. I gotta, I gotta keep the little people happy. Come on. Fishy wedding! Your Majesty, the Archduke of Saul, has invited you to the forthcoming wedding. Your attendance would shore up relations between our great nations. Depths below, great nations. The, oh, hey, Typhon Twister. The Isle of Saul is no more than a nest of pirates and cutthroats. And I heard it isn't a proper marriage anyway. The Archduke is marrying a fish! The groom is a finfolk, one of the denizens of the sea, perfectly sapient and actually amphibious. Well, the church doesn't agree with a man marrying a fish. We mustn't legitimize this farce by allowing the king to attend. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh mm, mm, mm. Oh, I didn't even realize faith is on this on this list, huh? Hmm. Who would? Hmm. Well, I'm. going to veto one of these decisions and the veto is going to be condemning the wedding I'm not gonna condemn love between a beautiful young woman and a fish man it's probably a strangely attractive fish man Looks like I'm attending the wedding. Looks like I'm attending the wedding. Stability up, faith down, defiance up, huh? Well, to the wedding we go. Of course I should go. Excellent, the wedding scheduled for next year. I'll inform the Archduke that you'll attend. This kingdom sliding into madness. When it's announced you attend the wedding, the patricians are naturally scandalized. But the peasants, sentimental as ever, are in favor of your decision. Public opinion turns against the overly strict church. Ooh, faith go down, but stability go up. My authority and my stability remain strong. <sighs> We've done it, boys. We've gone through another season of my excellent, excellent kingdom. Nobles can use their wealth to build on buildings regions, each of which affects a stat. This is done through an auction where only the two most funded buildings are chosen. When the auction is open, nobles can fund with a personal command. F exclamation point fund a X, where X is personal wealth. When you're ready, hit start auction. So we've got 
Oh, you go. Oh. You've barons, you've got observatories and theaters. Counts, you've got prisons and stadiums. And patricians, you've got a fortress and a grand bazaar. Go. Wow, that theater's going up. Wow! Okay. I'm seeing you are wanting to fund the theater. <laughs> All right. What about the prison versus the stadium? Oh, you guys are having a tougher time. Uh, and the Grand Bazaar seems like an easy choice. Oh, it's two of the six? No. Nobles use the only the two highest funded. And oh, that's how it's working. Hey. Time's up. Interesting. Wow, you guys spent a lot of money on that. These are both crucial to your uh, your stats here, so that's great. Good job. I think you I think the patricians are gonna um, get I think they're gonna get their trade uh, is there a way I can check the their their goals I guess you guys remember them word from the March no you know what let's go talk to the patricians hey Typhon your Serene Highness something most strange has occurred on the ghost sea New Island Halfway between our shores and the Isle of Sia, Saul. Finfolk raised it from the depths using their weird ocean magic. It's true. The Finfolk raised the island to celebrate the marriage of their prince, to the Archduke of Saul. This, they will gift it to him. This terrible news. That island is of immense strategic importance. We can't let it to fall into Elish hands. Huh. Unfortunately, we do not have the money to sink the island back back into the ocean. It's not an option. Also, none of these show any of the what will happen. Have you noticed? Have you seen this? We don't know what will happen. <sighs> I would like to seduce the prince and fuck his fish face. I bet it's wet. <laughs> okay, well, I, I'm glad, to, hey, listen. Sometimes democracy works, all right? Sometimes it works. <laughs> All right, well, time to seduce the fish man. Capital idea. I've always found the fish folk appealing. Silence falls over the council. The nobles glance at each other, coughing and adjusting their collars. Well, you're unattached and you make a far better match for the fin folk prince than the Archduke of some rainy island. What's the harm? Very well. I'll seduce the sexy, sexy fish man. We all admire your sacrifice, your esteemed highness. Prep. For your clandestine visit to the Finfolk's undersea villages. Chancellor has heard of magic reeds that allow the bearer to pray in the underwater, but such a thing will take weeks. At least give you time to prepare you for your underwater visit and to buy some waterproof roses. <sighs> well, that's going to be interesting. All right. March, what's up? My liege, I have something embarrassing to report. Remember when I accused Count- Oh, you f fucking idiots! Oh, shit! When I accused Gilliam Yeager's the second's father of stealing my family's lucky ring and he was arrested? Funny thing, my nephew was the culprit. Needed a ring to propose to my dear Vezil of the Gilliam Yeager family. I knew our families would never allow such a match, so it had to be secret. I knew the magic ring would bring good fortune. It was the perfect gift. 
What? Dreykov's bones. My father rotted away in a prison because of this? Your family are honorless knaves. Don't think I'm letting Vasil anywhere near that nephew of yours. For once we agree, Count, please, your highness, step in and end this ridiculous romance. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna veto the blessing. You may not bless the Union Gang. <sighs> so what do you wanna do? Do you wanna raise your own defiance or do you want to raise my authority looks like y'all want to raise your own defiance I shouldn't interfere they're fucking mad y'all are fucking piss mad right now Fucking piss, man. You can only hope their feud resolves itself. Y'all getting pissy. Is that it? Do we do all three? Oh no, finding a spouse! Twisty passes to your castle, you can avoid your advisors, nobles, even the spymaster, but there's one person you can't avoid. Your mom. What the fuck? Why haven't you found a spouse yet? It's almost been a year. It, it, I've been busy. Better find the time. Don't worry, I'll take the liberty of finding eligible candidates. What's your preference? Men, women, you do not mind. I don't, I don't really care, man. Excellent. I'll send out messages to the most influential noble families. Let's see what they got. I don't, I don't really care. All right, we've done it. We've done it. Here's the season. Hidden in a labyrinth beneath an eastern castle, a pair of counts meet to speak of their schemes against the king. Chancellor sent me a fruit basket last week to thank us for our efforts in helping the crown. It's working. Our reputation is secure. Our problem now is the Archbishop. His beady little eyes will be focused on us if we're not careful. You must evade him. The next stage, the Counts must lower their faith to four or less in four seasons. Shit! You succeeded! Amidst dark and foreboding forests, a small squat little castle stands watch over the marcher border. There, at the end of the kingdom, a plot is hatching. Have the merchants from Kurth arrived with the gunpowder? No, they still fear the king's reprisals, not to mention their own government. Then our work is not done. We still need to weaken Pat's grip. The Baron's aim is to lower authority to four or less. Sorry, Barons. I may collect tax or target a specific region. Taxing a region will increase their defiance and e decrease noble wealth. Hey, the Baron's got, uh, got some, some sick money. Ah, <sighs> good job, Barons. Hey. Listen. <sighs> Where should I tax? I don't know. I will tax everyone. It's fair. It's a fair tax. Alright. It's fair. Alright, what do we got? We've got... Is that say... What does that say? Fisting the Finfolk? Visiting the Finfolk. All right, well, let's go fuck a fish man in the mouth. Finfo can send a sage coach made from a giant clam pulled by seahorses. You equip your magic breathing reed and hop inside. The clam carriage plunges back beneath the waves near Wiston down to the murky depths. A few hours later, you arrive at the undersea 
citadel of kelpoven huts the prince meets you at a grand table formed of knotted coral tiny fin folk spawnlings flowing around your feet as you sit greetings your majesty we're honored to have such a prestigious visitor this place is amazing a whale passes overhead momentarily dousing you in shadow Challenge. Some choices have uncertain incomes, called challenges. These can either be random or based on stat. Percentage shows the chance of success. So you're here to discuss my betrothal to Archduke Shomo and the island I'm giving him as a dowry. 30%. More like fine folk, am I right? Awooga. You're clumsy at... <laughs> seduction is beneath the dignity of your office. I am to be married soon, remember? No more time for your foolish games. Goodbye. No! You clam coach spirits you back to the surface. As you wait on the beach, you gasp for breath. Air never tasted so good. How did it go? Did you successfully seduce the fish man? It never came up. That's a shame, I suppose. Listen as intently as you describe your conversation with the folk prince. Most unfortunate. The wedding will go ahead at uh, after all. At least you tried. Let's, uh, let's see my eligible options. Yeah, I found three potential matches. One eligible young candidate from each of the three kingdoms. Choose wisely. You'll be securing a powerful alliance. And a part for, for life. To have it hold, don't forget. Suppose so, but the alliance comes first. Your mother leads you to the great hall, where she's arranged three portraits. Each now, each covered by a cloth. All right, let's see him. Let's weigh the cloth from the first one. This is Verenica, daughter of Eastern Solicit Opinions Dynasty. Not sure why the artist made her look so severe. Just a trick of the light, I suppose. She brought a controlling interest in a silver mine in the East and made a killing. She did have to suppress a peasant revolt in her land recently. I wonder why. Intriguing candidate. From the coast, we have Marcel, the wealthy heir to noble Patrician Narrow's estate. He spends most of his time in the solitude of his villa, so I know a little about him. Eh, could be worse. Finally, we have the March's offering. Bastion Scion of the Cracker Jack 450 bloodline. Typical Baron, really. Loud, brash, self-absorbed, but mostly well-meaning. Like most Barons, his great passion is hunting. No beast safe from his crossbow. Nor is he. He walks with a limp ever since he shot himself in the shin trying to get a ferret. It sounds like a laugh. What do you think? Of course, by picking a candidate, you'll anger the other regents, but you'll gain a lifelong alliance. I've made my decision. <sighs> Verenica of the East. All right, counts. We're in this together now. Heretical discovery. Your esteemed highness, I bring troubling news. If you say it's troubling, then it must be. A group of individuals in the East are meeting in secret to preach heretical teachings and engage in rituals. They're believing of some ancient folkloric tradition. It's tied to some primordial spirit they say lives in the trees. Silly stories for children. Regrettably, I require the council's permission to launch a proper investigation. Otherwise, my inquisitors would have destroyed the cult before it has the chance to spread. Forget the nobles. I give you permission. I'm the king. I can't. Why can't I? Why is it grayed out? Damn. Well, I'll hold a vote on the matter. I'd like to uh, repeal the law, personally. Let's see what you guys think. I 
I'm seeing that you got anything I pick, you guys just refuse to vote for. I'm noticing this. <sighs> I'm not bad at the game. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit to, to wait on the... Because, like, y'all are still trickling in. Yeah, the patricians tend to be all over the place. It's pretty interesting. All right, looks like uh, we're going to be denying the access. Well, cult's going to just do whatever now. Nothing to... Oh! Fuck off! Wow, look at that. Nothing to rein them in. The pagans thrive in the faithless region of the East, spreading their influence and gaining followers. Hmm. We've done everything. Looks like we've done everything. Time to end the season. Can adopt a new law that alters how voting is run. You can only adopt one new law at a time and have a maximum of three to lose. Hmm. Monarch's iron choice. The monarch can mark the preferred voting option. If chosen, they gain an authority. After voting, nobles can change their minds and vote for a different option. Oh, that's fascinating. Nobles must vote for their least favorite option. With the... Uh, oh, yeah! <laughs> okay. An island wedding. Your esteemed highness, in a few days you'll be traveling to the Archduke of Saul's controversial wedding. Surely there's a way we could turn it to our advantage. We must forge an alliance with them. They have fast ships, and with the new island outposts, could control most of the ghost sea. We could probably object to this blasphemous union of man and fish. He's not a fish, dude. He's a, he's a finfolk. Same difference. It's a matter for the council, I believe. Ooh, 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 mm, ooh. Mm, 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 mm. You're doing the reverse vote. Go. Alright, so you guys don't want me to object. Got it. No objections on religious grounds. Remember, guys. If the counts win, you all lose too. Good luck. Soon, the time has come. You board a ship and sail to the newly risen island where the Archduke is due to marry his finfolk groom. Lacking a spouse, you've chosen the Chancellor as your plus one. Oh, I do love weddings, though I end up in a flood of tears. At least the new island crests the horizon. So the empty little rock, devoid of vegetation, no buildings, it's a marquee and a hastily constructed, constructed church of the night. But it's packed with people, mostly minor nobles of Saul, who welcome you with cheers and bows. You fall into the church. As the ceremony begins, the Finfolk Prince walks down the aisle with the Archduke of Saul, waits with clasped hands. Does anyone know any lawful impediment to these two being joined in marriage? Nope. 
And I now pronounce you married. That's that then. Time for a party. Everyone crowds in the marquee to get incredibly drunk. As you're making the rounds, chatting in goblin canapes, you find yourself face to face with the Archduke. Your Majesty, thank you for coming. A toast to my new husband and I. I can see that you're very much in love. Well, yes, and the island dowry didn't hurt. Would you be interested in a little tiny bit alliance? Depends. What do you have to offer me? Oh, excuse me. I have a text message from the from the queen. Hmm. Money. No military support. I could offer you some food. I do love your buttered turnips. Very well. An alliance is born. You celebrate long into the night with, and wake with a thudding headache. When you arrive back at the capital, the council's pleased that you follow their choice. Defiance down. Defiance down. Defiance down. Hey, East. Thanks for being loyal as fuck. This alliance will bring us great fortune, your esteemed highness. The new island... Pro Ah, darn. Well, time for the royal wedding. Wedding to Verenica is naturally the talk of the kingdom. Nobles and peasants alike travel from across the realm to attend. For a weekend today, the capital's a giant party. Feels like you're the only one not taking part. Instead, you're getting ready for the ceremony. Soon enough, you're staying at St. Bertrand's Cathedral with Verenica at your side. Do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife? I do. Then I pronounce you king and wife. Oh, authority go up. Stability go up. After the wedding, of course, there's only a feast. The feast. After the feast, a dance. Your new wife, Renica, only dances with obvious reluctance. Y'all, y'all, uh, y'all are sucking my fucking dick now. By the time you find yourself alone, it's past midnight and you've never felt more tired. Neither of us asked for this union, but I assure you, it can blossom into something of mutual benefit. Agreed. Excellent. I hope this alliance proves most fruitful. You head to your separate bed chambers. Perhaps you will draw closer in time, but for now, your wife is happy to keep you at arm's length. Oh, the y'all, the barons are just like, I'm giving up. Oh, y'all, you fucking loser barons. Your Majesty, two barons on their way to home from an epic hunt and seek shelter. In exchange, they're willing to gift you a rare trophy and provide meat for an extravagant feast. Tell me more. Names are Slavish Circle and Razy. As for this particular hunt, ancient marcher tradition. Something about trekking to all four corners of the kingdom to claim a bounty from the great spirit animals. Bring them in, motherfuckers! Table set for a delectable feast, though your wife doesn't join. You enjoy the company of the two barons while the storm rages. The meat they provide is said to come for their latest kill. Hortusk, an ancient boar the size of a castle. You're not sure you believe their story, but it certainly tastes better than anything you've had for a long while. But later, you hear strange noises coming from their quarters, like a pig squealing and snorting. Let's investigate the noise. Creep down the corridors and open the door. The former baron stare before you, transformed into a hideous pork iron beast with stands on two legs, snouts, tusks, and floppy ears. Your Majesty! Don't look at us! What the fuck's going on, man? It's the meat. We hunted and butchered an ancient legendary beast. We were told it was cursed, but we're also told devouring the beast, the spirit of the force itself would bestow great power. We never thought this would be a reward. But I ate the meat too. So sorry, this is the first time this has happened. We've been eating this meat for many days now. Perhaps a single meal is not enough? I won't tell anyone. You hurry the barons through one of your hidden passages. Passages. They go without a word, not wanting to argue with your decision. Once outside, you bid them farewell. With as much sincerity as the hideous faces can muster, they vow to repay your kindness. You fucking owe me, barons! You owe me! I kept your pig secret! In a dingy seaside tavern, two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. The coast economy's never been better. We're making more money than I know what to do with. Money breeds money. It makes a series of investments to improve our profits even more. But what do we do with all the rest of our gold? Time to start buying things. Lands, roads, bridges. Buy up the whole kingdom, piece by piece. But first, the king has to be in a desperate need of our gold. To advance their scheme, 
Patricians must lower the treasury to 1500 or less in two seasons. Oh. All right. Let's end that season. We got Fever Dreams, a menacing o omen, and helping hand. Well, let's take care of Fever Dreams first, shall we? Over the course of the summer, you're plagued by horrific dreams. You're running through the open woods full of screams as your colossal jaws bite beast and human alike. Well, shit. You're always hunting and always hungry. The council's noticed your lack of sleep. As you become tired and irritable, something must be done. Fuck! Physician's not gonna help. Let's go kill some motherfuckers. You set out on a steed and spend a weekend praying on Game of the Black Wield, a dark and ancient forest. Yet strange urges creep in, like you want to jump on the prey and rip them apart with your own teeth. Dreams only grow more vivid. That might have not been the best solution. A menacing omen. Look at Pistol Happy Man! Look how cool he is! In the east, we have a hair problem. It doesn't sound too bad. Lamentably, it's a dire open. The town of Mezengrin holds a spring festival, welcoming the warmth back to our desolate lands. This year, we're forced to miss it. The fabled hare known as the Pale Beast of Mezengrin appears and officially begins the festival, but not this year. The surfs grow restless. Wide as snow, size of a large dog, bears majestic coiled antlers, and it's delicious with parsnips. The gathered nobles gasp and fall silent. Blood and stars, you ate the Pale Beast of Mezengrin? Hopped into my lands. I thought it was a rare sort of rabbit. This monster has eaten the fabled Pale Beast, casting a shadow upon the coming year, the coming decade. It's not just a hare. The Pale Beast possesses powers beyond your understanding. Your Highness, please bring down the weight of justice upon this wretch. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm going to veto publicly confessing it. You owe me, Barons. I kept your pig secret. Come on. Barons, I got you. Cheers, my lady. It'd be a pity to make more of this than it deserves. In the next tax from the Barons, here's the little extra, along with a gracious thank you note. But meanwhile, the counts are furious. Sorry, Patricia. In the end, Ca Count Pistol Happy Man claims that he saw the white hair and a festival goes ahead. But even so, the peasants of Mezergen remain unsettled. Stability went down a little bit, but that's okay. Pat's wife's gonna be pissed. Nah, man, she can't. She can't stay away from this fucking cock. This pig cock. What I tell you, what I tell you, help in hand for this wiener. What can I do for you, wife? I run a very successful lumber company back at home in the east. Hold on.
All right. The current laws are a little restrictive. Lots of tariffs and regulations. You know how it is. I was hoping you could push for some changes. Eliminate some of the cumbersome quality standards for Eastern Lumber, perhaps. You want me to give the East preferential treatment? I think it's only fair. The other regions just can't compete with us. Okay. Hold on, I'm gonna take... I'm gonna... I'm gonna take a photo of this to, to send to wife. I'm sending this photo to wife. Because a wife is wife. Delightful. <sighs> Reverse voting. Wow, you guys really don't want Eastern, uh, Eastern Lumber Standards, huh? Sorry, vote's closed. Looks like quality on all lumber's going down. Unfortunate. The relaxation of standards has resulted in the lowering production costs and boosting the economies everywhere. Everyone, enjoy your economy. Unfortunately, it leads to a lot of collapsed buildings and unavoidable accidents. Oops! Luckily, you're all very loyal. Thanks, highly loyal subjects. All right, go! What do you want? Spend your cash! Yeah, you can still join. Just type uh, exclamation point join followed by your pronoun. Wow, the patricians are rich as fuck. Look at these rich-ass nobles. Looks like you guys are building another theater. You know, barons, I have, like, I've been good to you. I've been good to you, barons. You know, I don't know why. Time's up. Well, you spent a lot of money. Faith go up. Authority go down. Ooh. About my heir. Your marriage has grown stale. Oh, you'll get along well enough. There's some good memories, but there's no spark. Cares more about profits than happiness. Spark or no spark, you still need some nut. Congratulations, the royal wedding is magnificent. Went about as well as could be expected. You're still in power, got still got the crown on your head, that's what matters. You've done well, but something's missing, an heir. You need someone young whose loyalty is assured. A child of your own would do the trick, even if they're a bastard, or the youngest of your many cousins. I'm pretty sure I got some fucking kid lying around. Church won't be happy, but they're as keen to avoid a civil war as we. They'll legitimize the bastard without much fuss. I will meet with the Archbishop tomorrow. A terrible accident. Your Majesty, dire news. Lord Megamed was found in the palace gardens this morning, attacked by something. Torn limb from limb. Uh-oh. He's technically your guest at the time. 
You must make every effort to assure the patricians that it was not intentional. Sorry, Mega Man. Suddenly recall the night before. Dreams of blood and gore, ripping a helpless noble apart with your powerful jaws. Your Highness, are you listening? Well, shit. Um. Ah. Uh, he died during the hunt. Despite your well-crafted story, the Patricians are not easily appeased. One of their own dying under your protection reflects badly. But more urgent is your knowledge of what you did. You have become a monster with an insatiable hunger for fresh meat, human or otherwise. Nah, that's fine. I get used to this. If the Ninth God had not wanted this for you, it would not have happened. Rather than shy away, you embrace them, indulging with regular midnight hunts. Soon local peasants are fucking freaked out, and rumors of a terrible bloodthirsty beast spread to the crown lands. Terrible secret. Your Majesty, the Counts are deliberately eroding the power of the church in the east. Whoa, hey, really? We're actually going to deal with this? What, really? Hardly believed it. It's alarming why they're doing this. The Counts are planning to haul your mind and summon a demon. By the time they're finished, there'll be nothing but a shell. The demon will take over by the ninth god. My thoughts exactly. Must bring sacrilege to the council's attention. Well, guys. Do you want the counts to get to the next stage of their scheme or not? Look at these loser counts down here. Dangers. Ooh, demons are scary. That's it. Fuck. All across the kingdom, priests deliver impassioned sermons. On the dangers of the seventh God's agents, more and more citizens flock to the church and the peasants place holy symbols in windows to protect their homes. But many nobles grumble. This is King Pat in charge of the Inquisition. Well, shit. That's everything. Time to end the season. Count rides to a remote, unremarkable spot. Soon another joins him. Church is scrambling for power. High Inquisitor's losing his grip. Most pleasing, then we can make our move unseen. We must invite a demon. The ancient books require us to describe two, each attracted to different aspects of a human mind. Which one you guys got? Interesting. Now you are you are actually gonna have to fight each other. Duke of Greed, the face of coin, huh? Raise the treasury to... Filthy rich. 3400 ah! <laughs> There's some exceptions. If two or more regions pass the final scheme, the winner will decide at random. If stability, authority, or treasury hits zero and a final scheme pass at the same time, scheme wins. Rebellion ends with a state. Rebellion win and final scheme. The scheme takes priority. Monarch can only win in ambition events, which will appear after you've acquired an heir. Sitting on a bench outside a sun-bleached villa, two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. The thrice-cursed king is still refusing to sell us any public land. Makes sense. Treasury's not suffering right now. Let us bide our time until the king's gold runs out. 
Patrician's aim is to lower it to 1,500 or less. Okay, Patricians. Okay, Counts. Okay, see what you fucking have to do with this. You want me broke or rich? Back in the march, a number of figures crowd around an unassuming barrel. First shipment from Kurth. Incredible, Macy inside. Careful with that torch, you fool. You'll blow us to smithereens. This is the fable black powder. Incredibly powerful, but we need much, much more to put you on the throne. The next stage, they must raise their trade to five in four seasons. Oh, well, you're already succeeding. Taxation on the richies. Da da ba 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 da boopy. What if I gained a little bit of money by taxing the fucking patricians? Rebellion report. One or more regions are able to rebel as their defiance is higher than authority and stability. The rebels get more victory points than the loyalists, they'll win. The loyalists get more victory points than the rebellion, they'll put the rebellion down. If multiple regions rebel and win, a vote between the two rebelling regions will, will determine the successor. Important. Rebelling regions have their schemes caused. Regions with high military stat are more likely to overthrow the... Uh -huh. mm -hmm. If stability, authority, or treasury hit zero, the rebels will just win. Whew! Well then, patricians, are you trying to make me broke or are you trying to rebel? Hold on a second. Defiance is too high and one or more regions is considering. Rebelling will stop the region from advancing and they can't be taxed or take place in votes. Looks like you guys can rebel at any time. Nigel Schnauzerpug will be leading the rebellion, you shit pussies. Oh, look at your three military. Mm. Oh, look at it go. Mm. Ooh, who's a little shit pussy? All right. <laughs> to the capital. An old debt. How do you expect me to take this seriously, you crack brain simpleton? Shut your daft mouth and give me what I'm owed, you honorless dog. Calm down. Pimple-headed lackwit expects me to pay him a huge quantity of gold just because his great-great-grandpa beat my great-great-grandfather in a foot race. Dead owed is a dead owed, isn't it? Your Serene Highness, I only recently discovered this debt while combing through my ancestor's journal. Hat honor indicates, sorry, dictates that Baron the Iron Forge is liable for his ancestor's debt. By the ninth, ludicrous, ludicrous. I demand we put this to a vote. To the vote we is. To the vote we is. I'm gonna veto. Can no, you know what? Fuck it. Figure it out between yourselves. This is this is a noble issue. I really have no stake in this. <sighs> wow, you guys are fucking assholes. are fucking pricks all right i guess you guys are paying two centuries of interest i'll go bankrupt your great great grandpa should have thought of that before he decided to run so slowly i'll tell you what a few weeks i'll sell family silver uh, Bear on the Iron Forge is, uh, is broke. Outrage. Trachezoid, you little snake. I'll get you back. Ooh, 11 votes. 
Counterfeit currency, huh? March has been prosperous, but my tax collectors are reporting suspicious coins. The whole region's awash with fake money. Council needs to act. Others are. Don't even care. Don't even care. Boop. Tell everyone to examine their coins. Town criers across the march ring their bells in order townsfolk to beware of forged coins. Trade's now dynamic. Stability's now lawless. Authority is now mocked. All right, panic in the council. Yo, August, I bring bad news. We're receiving reports of, I'm sure your news can wait. Bring urgent tidings to the east to demand the king's attention. Wait your turn, you ignorant dolt. Why don't you settle your core outside? Meanwhile, I have news from the, okay. One at a time. Everyone chill out. Industries of the coast are in grave danger. Workers are striking. Fewer hours, higher pay. Is that all? The eastern courts are corrupt. Their judges are letting off the vilest criminals in return for the slightest bit of coin. My news is worse still. Order in the march is broken down, my leech. Battalions have killed their own officers and are roving in the wilderness, acting like bandits. All these problems have risen because your kingdom is increasingly unstable. Something must be done. What do you suggest? You know, guys, you taking down my stability maybe is hurting yourselves. Fortunately, we lack the resources to tackle these problems. We have to vote on which one to prioritize. You know what? Figure it out. Looks like you figured it out. We're gonna reform the Eastern Courts. Corrupt Eastern judges are stubborn. When you try to remove them from their posts, they retaliate by enforcing all the old forgotten laws that everybody agreed to ignore. Suddenly, merchants are legally required to wear blindfolds on weekends. And every coin must be passed under the nose of a cat before it's spent. Trade grinds to a halt. Once the, uh... Stupid old laws are repealed. You enact crucial legal reforms. No more corruption in the East. Or at least less of it. The crisis in the East has been squashed, making the kingdoms a whole slightly more stable. But the nobles of other regions feel that you're ignoring their problems. I mean, y'all can go fuck yourselves. Royal Decree, we can tweak the laws governing the council votes. How's the rebellion going? Defiance is too high. Ooh, you guys could start a rebellion. Do you want to? Let's find out. Remember, you can't vote. You can't vote. A taste- oh! Oh. 
No voting for y'all. Tasty innovation. Don't mean to exaggerate, but I believe I pioneered the most incredible invention in the history of mankind. I'm hosting a small party, playing cards with some old friends. I called for a servant to bring me something that to eat that was both tasty and convenient, as my hands were occupied. The servant brought me that evening. will change the world forever, your highness. It sounds like your servant invented it. Yes, he's my employee, so I own the idea. It's only fair. Behold, by the way, if the patricians join the rebellion and the barony wins, the barony wins. Holds in the air plate. Top the plate is two slices of bread with a piece of meat. Allows the hungry noble to consume two slices of bread plus meat all at once, saving valuable time. Meanwhile, the bread serves as an impregnable barrier, preventing one's hands from being besmirched by the meaty juices. Bread ticket. Naturally, this is my invention. I propose we name it after me. In a few years time, I expect everyone to be enjoying a nice Andrew Man 7301 for lunch. Can I get an Andrew Man, please? Naturally, this in innovation can not be can made available for free. Every time an Andrew man is consumed, I expect a small royalty. No treasury voting. Stop doing that? Eat my fucking dick, Queequeg! <sighs> the servant shall be rewarded. Seven takers, you wouldn't have invented the snack if I had specifically requested. The servant is brought before you. People call me foot long due to my ahem large feet. We're gonna call it foot long. Society, henceforth, the innovative dish shall be known as a foot long. They pr prove massively popular luncheon. Bakeries spring up across the east, experimenting with new ingredients. Turns out you can put in almost anything. You guys are assholes. A laughing stock. The one the acclaimed play, playwright Nigel Natterflit has written another smash hit. All the theaters in the capital are showing it nightly. Oh, wonderful. So do I. So does everyone. The problem is the new play features a character obviously based on you. An admiring homage? How delightful. You misunderstand me, your highness. The character is played by a professional clown named Biffo. At one point, a bucket of custard is appended over his head as he sits on the throne. Your highness, peasants and nobles alike are watching this play. The see, there is a pact. You put, put a stop to it. You simply cannot be known as King Biffo. I'm going to attend the play myself. A shocked silence falls in the theater as Harold's announce your arrival. You wait from the royal box. Authors stare up at you, horrified. The show must go on. The play begins. Soon enough, the clown king arrives on stage, completely tripping on his own robes. They somehow found an actor who looks just like you. Endless humiliations are heaped upon the honking, squeaking parody. Finally, the play concludes with the custard-drenched king handing his crown to the deserving hero. All eyes turn to you. How do you react? I'm getting up on the stage! Oh, actors shrink away. The audience is deadly silent. Everyone's terrified of it. Congratulate the actors on their hilarious play. Audience breaks out in re relieved cheers. The actors bow before you, weeping from gratitude. Your rebellions are fucking canceled, losers. After that, the whole capital can talk about nothing but your good humor and mercy. Well, actually, maybe not. <laughs> we'll see. A letter of thanks. Your Majesty, a letter for you. The Chancellor hands you a small, tattered envelope. On the back is a seal you don't recognize, but you think it's from the March. Your esteemed highness, recently you hosted us when you were in need. You'll be powerful to know that we've been cured with the help of a powerful witch in the woods. Please accept this gift. We'll always be in your debt. Small cedar lock box. Inside are a number of gold coins. Oh, it's in a ruby encrusted brooch. $200.
to my wife. <sighs> All right. Let's end the season. In rebellion. No doubt the nobles are steaming. 3,400, 1,500 or less. You guys, we gotta, use, we gotta use some money out here. Also, barons? Barons, you're rebelling, okay? You, you can't, you can't fucking, you can't. The first side to earn f five victory points will win. Victory points are earned through events. If the rebels are victorious, the monarch's overthrown. Come on. Come on. Barons, you can't rebel, you fucking bitches. Come on. Your heir. Your request for an heir is complete. You stand before the council holding a small child. Should I die, ask the crown be passed too? My boy. The assembled nobles break out in sporadic applause. By designating an heir, you've cemented the stability of the kingdom, provided they can survive the civil war. Oh wow, it even it even accompanies my son, the new king baseball. Though the common folk may lose some faith in the church, seeing the king's extramarital adventures being forgiven so easily. Steam may I be the first to congratulate you on legitimizing your son. What is his name? Pat two. Marvelous. I'll sure Pat little Pat two will grow up to be a chip off the old block. Boy quick. Alright. Rebellion! At long last, the parents have reached their boiling point. You're confronted in your throne by Baron Kaiser. Tst. His boots stomping mud all over your nice carpet. Oh, hold on a second. Mm. Barons of the March are sick of your lies and tyranny. We'll give you soft sitting city dwelling bastards a proper kicking. We'll be fighting for Sapil, the true queen. Motherfuckers ruining my bullshit. Formal declaration of war. The next time we'll see each other, we'll be on the battlefield. Seize that fucking bitch! Traitors get the chop. What? You can't do this. I'm an envoy, see? See how the king's tyranny grows worse by the day? Your watchman wastes no time. Dragged out into the courtyard and has his head struck from his shoulders. Didn't expect them to move so boldly, your majesty. What are our chances against the rebels? Barons are formidable, but not undefeatable. I hope they don't persuade other regions to join. That would be disastrous. How'd things get this bad? Leader is Baron Fanciful Fright. As reasons for the uprising, they're citing your history of petty transgressions against the barons. Too late to apologize? It is. Time for swords, not words. So this is it. Civil war? Kingdom's divided. There'll be a lot of death and suffering before this is over. Can't wait. I'll go dig out the trebuchets. The opening strike. Time has come. The kingdom's grown soft under the weak and ineffectual rule of King Pat. As per usual, it's up to the barons to fix things. With violence. Aye, too right. Let's march to the capital and kick some heads in. All in good time, but we're the barons. We, let's live up to that reputation, huh? Let's be clever. But I want to kick some heads. Oh, there'll be plenty of that, but let's think carefully about where to strike first. We can launch a preemptive strikes against the counts to cripple their military. We suspect the Counts may join our cause. We can call them to war. They'll be more likely to join us if the King's authority is low. We could call upon the Church to condemn the King. Or finally, you could send off an assassin to nip this in the bud. What are you guys gonna do? Oh, you want the counts to join your cause? The counts that are 700 gold away from winning the entire game? Uh, 
smuggle a secret message to the counts. Dignified counts, you too long have suffered under the king's oppression. You Easterners are proud. Why are you putting up with this tyrant? Join us. So they speak truly. Why do we never think of these things this way? The counts are emboldened. Of course, they can only act on it. Their defiance is high enough. All right, let's end that season. What do you guys want to fucking build? Remember, counts. If you join the rebellion and you guys win, then you're going to have to fight the barony for the scraps. You guys can't let uh, the barons build that, that fortress. They're going to win the game if they get this rebellion going. <laughs> Stability up, but so is the military. Interesting. Current rebelling on the verge of rebellion. Can't start a rebellion. Great battle. Vast armies darken the landscape like the shadows of clouds. Flags are flying. Drums are pounding in rhythm with the marching of boots. The kingdom is gripped with civil war. At least that's what you imagine. Most of your time is spent in the safety of your palace, poring over a giant map with your marshal. Your majesty, the army of the march is advancing on the capital, led by that treacherous cur baron fanciful fright. I've received word from the camp commander that our loyalist forces on the coast. If they march now, they'll intercept the barons in the matter of days. Alternatively, they could join forces with the Army of the East. It's risky, but together they'd have a higher chance of defeating the accursed barons. What are your orders? They're gonna have to join forces, guys. Very well. Relay your orders to Lord Patrician Garbage Nirvana, the commander in the field. Hopefully they'll do as they're told. God knows the treachery can thrive. We have our orders, but should we follow them? It's up to you whether or not this rebellion succeeds, guys. If the rebellion succeeds, you will flat out lose. You will flat lose. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. The whole city holds its breath. You stew in your palace, waiting for your marshal's return. Finally, she arrives, looking perfectly composed. Your majesty has ordered the patricians have turned their army around to link up with the counts. We can only hope this was the right decision. Have some confidence, your majesty. Too late for doubts now. It all comes down to the next battle. The fate of the kingdom hangs in the bells. We'll prevail. That's right. I have to be going. I have a lot to take care of. Over the next few weeks, it becomes clear that the coastal's army retreat has given the parents free reign to plunder and pillage the coast. The rampaging marcher troops <laughs> descend on farms like locusts, taking everything to feed thousands of hungry soldiers. Meanwhile, shops and churches and manors are plundered, the stolen loot shipped back to the march. Wow. What are you blaming me for? That's them doing that! While the coast suffers, the coastal forces successfully link up with the coat, the counts. Now the joint army of patricians and counts rush to meet the barons in open warfare, and the winner will either end your reign or preserve it. Losing trust. Majesty, the common folk of the march still don't trust our coin. They've gone back to bartering with chickens. The good news for you, of course, the rebels' economy is suffering greatly as a result. Agents are everywhere. Busy times right now. I heard something particularly interesting. 
good news, I hope. Any news can be good news if used effectively. There are dissenters amongst the March of Truth who want this conflict as little as us. My agents could use them to sow a position among their ranks. Could be dangerous, but could damage enemy morale. We could lure them to join the coastal troops. Some of the patricians might resent hosting turncoats, but we must be practical. I'd like a call for unity, please. Grand call for unity, and I appreciate that. You even picked the uh, the item I wanted. Cash incentive. Your military's kicked up. You're a little mad, and the loyalists have gained a point. Some of the patricians aren't happy and see it as a sign of weakness, but then the new troops helped conquer strategically important territory, even as they appreciate the extra bodies. Mm. Excellent. Excellent season. Thanks, Counts. Victory points from the Loyalists! Excellent! The final battle! A month ago, a battle was averted, but that battle can't be postponed. The patricians and Counts are all the stands between the barons and the capital. Final battle decided in the favor of the kingdom. Words, I'll send word to the Counts that it's time to strike. You can only hope they listen to your orders. Guys? It's up to you as to whether or not you want to fight me or the barony. I would very much appreciate you can fight the barony and then we all deal with our bullshit later. Thanks, Counts. I knew I liked you. When she finally returns on the manner you hoped, she's carried in your throne room on a stretcher, coughing weakly. Her torso is covered in blood. What happened? Let me make her a report. We caught the barons in a classic pincer. The counts attacked from one side, the patricians charged from the other. But the barons had occupied a defensive hilltop. My arrogance, I thought our combined forces were enough. But they prepared a few surprises on their own. Hidden archers burning oil, feigned retreat, and then suddenly turned back and his were hurt. They pulled out all the stops. It was a slaughter. All I remember is blood and screen. So much death. Holy shit. When they found me, it was under a pile of corpses with six arrows in me. They say it's a miracle I survived at all. How could this happen? Truly sorry that I failed you. Once the year's end, we must build a fortification, stockpile food, trains up a citizens, militia. Barons will be camped outside the city walls in a matter of weeks. Time to pray to the ninth, your majesty, because apart from him, we're on our own. I don't think you guys have the ability to rebel now. The barons will sweep you. Majesty, Merchant's here to sell you. Come to, all the way from Kurth. Hope he's got something useful. I believe he does. Wonderful to see you. Your pet, little Pat 2, is doing well. Very well, thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. More of you, please know the Kurth Senate have deliberated for many weeks and ultimately agreed to extend an offer of an arms contract. Not just any contract, mind you. The Republic has offered to sell you gunpowder. You name it, what do you got? Everything your heart could desire. Muskets would be pretty useful. Muskets, you say? Oh, we'll have your whole army out for it before the month's end. I'll add that to your total. I'll also take some cannons. 
Of course, mount them on your ships or wheel them into battle. They're as versatile as they are deadly. It's a thousand for those. Nine hundred for that. Actually, we're good. Merchant leaves. Keep them sweet. Mots knows the Counts aren't happy. The rebels have a keen eye. They'll take advantage of the situation. If the East joins, we'll be in trouble. Time time you ask the Counts directly what they need. Absolutely. The Counts whisper among themselves. Glancing your direction. How long will this take? Each minute I spend, I sense the Baron's approach. It's not the easiest time for any of us. I just hope we can all have a productive time. Reverse voting. Now counts. Remember. You want me to be? Wait, really? Counts. Counts. You purple motherfuckers are dumb as fuck. You know, the, tre <laughs> the treasurer arranged the funds, and after a few weeks, she comes to see you regarding eastern farms. Please say crops are thriving in the east. Army marches on his stomach. The troops now accept march with confidence. Perhaps more importantly, the counts are praising your generosity. You only hope their good mood lasts. You. You fucking idiots. You fucking fools. Two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. To what do I owe this pleasure, Madam Treasurer? Give it a rest. You know I'm here. Let's hurry this up, shall we? Where do I sign? Here and here and here. There you go. You got what you wanted. Goodbye, Madam Treasurer. To my eyes to see me? What was the royal treasurer you were speaking with? Indeed. Good news. King's gold running out. The treasurer was willing to sell off the king's roads and bridges. Soon the kingdom will be ours. But what do we do when we own everything? What do you want? <sighs> Fucking counts just giving it away to the patricians. Just giving it away. All right, you're gonna extract the wealth. Let's do it. We invest a lot of money. It's time we started turning profit. But what about the king? Won't he try and stop us? The key word here is for try. For the final stage, you know, must lower authority to one or less. I would like to adopt swing votes. And I would like to change reverse voting permit. Rebellion's going quite badly. Deadly disease, give me a break. Bad news. I want the bad news first. 
Outbreak of a rare disease called Tamanon's Pox inside the city walls. Civilians dying by the hundreds, and it'll spread to our garrisons if we're not careful. Good news? I have a plan. After all, they're telling me more. Named after King Timmy in the Short. Very tall man, by all accounts. The pox, for whatever reason, causes people to grow a foot or two before they die of exhaustion. Let it never be said the physicians have no sense of humor. Regardless, it's spread by close contact, as well as through rats and fleas. Should be a trivial matter to spread such disease to the traitors outside our wall. Let's fucking do it. We're not letting it run rampant. I don't care. Listen, you get those motherfuckers sick, this is your own troops that don't have to die. Now there may or may not be some um, negative effects on this. But um, we'll deal with that when that happens. Spy master arranges an elaborate ruse involving affected soldiers captured by the enemy. You wait the results. Plan goes off without a hitch! It's not long before the pox spreads through the enemy camp like wildfire. Meanwhile, the pox spreads rapidly throughout the city. Having utterly failed to contain it, the death toll climbs and climbs. Furthermore, the nobles of your pound service are also infected. Though you personally avoid the worst, nearly everyone in the city lost somebody to the epidemic. Oops. Contaminated river. The Treadwater River's been contaminated. We're not sure how, but Baron's got upstream of us. And fouled the water. I'll spare the details what's happened to the poor souls of drunk from it. Rest assured it's not pretty, pretty and very deadly. Treadwater provides water for the whole city. If this isn't solved, we'll all die of sir. Thirst. I'm gonna have a call for unity. Don't know what your options are here, but you're gonna have to figure it out. I appreciate your continued support in this rebellion. Let's drown these bitches. <laughs> Revel in the opportunity, your highness. Dam goes up. Even the threat of arrow fire, the chief architect works like a beaver who smelled a pack of wolves. Contaminated water spills into the enemy camp, sowing disease and disarray. Unfortunately, a lot of it floods the city. Oopsie. Hydro engineering uh, was never my strong suit. Besieged! Barons march through the crown lands, pillaging and burning. The roads are heavy with refugees. Corpses clog the rivers. The capital surrounded. He's down on the ramparts of the palace, staring out at dismay at the army camp, stretching for miles. Get down from there, Your Majesty. If they get lucky with a crossbow bolt, what are we supposed to do? Patricians and the Counts are still out there. Their combined army may not have may have been defeated by the rebels in the last battle, but they'll be gathering reinforcements and calling on the reserves. Hope they get here in time. You're right, there's still hope. As you finish your sentence, an immense trebuchet hurls a ten-ton boulder towards the capital. Crashes into a nearby clock tower, smashing it to smithereens. Like I said, your majesty. You better get inside. You gotta be real careful here. Rebels are 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 oh, 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 oh. Rebels 
and the Loyalists are have, fighting a pitched battle. Rich get richer. Happened gradually, like a frog slowly boiled. First was paying a few patrician tolls here and there, across the road, sail down a river. As their cash reserves grew, so did their greed. Even the rebellion fizzled out. Barons couldn't afford to march on patrician, patrician roads. If they didn't pay, patricians, fearsome mercenaries from Valamir would come to collect, army or not. What about your crown? Might fetch a good price. Good idea. No time like the present. Hand it over and I'll organize an auction. Patricians bought your palace some time ago. It's been a struggle to pay rent. Sorry about this, Your Majesty. Everybody's struggling right now. Over the next few months, the king's economy slowly goes up in flames. Patricians get richer and richer, despite the turmoil. Soon, peasants can't even afford to buy bread. Birds throw themselves from high towers. Meanwhile, the obscenely wealthy patricians amuse themselves by going boating in specially made rivers of wine, or buying up entire villages and forcing the residents to fight for sport. Here you go, Your Supreme Majesty. What's this? Eviction notice. You haven't paid rent in months. Pack your things and get out. Can't eat. But I sold all my things to pay your bills. Not my problem. We're kicking you out and replacing you with Alex. It's about time, really. What am I supposed to do? I don't know. Get a job? You announce your abdication the next day is to gas from the Gathered Crown. Within a week, Alex has taken the throne. Within a month, you're living with Pat, too, on a farm ten miles from the closest village. Nobody out here knows your name or who you used to be. Veronica divorced you, of course. First chance she got. She didn't marry the king to spend her life as a farmer's wife. You're totally and utterly alone, except for the young Pat, too, and the sheep. Don't hear much about the, how the kingdom's faring. You soon lose track of who's even on the throne. Instead of sleeping until mid-morning in a bed of silk, you're up at dawn mucking out the stables. Occasionally, some disease or disaster or grand war will sweep over your little slice of countryside, leaving nearby houses and ashes or friends and graves. That's just life. But then things return to normal. And you know what? You're happy. Though sometimes, secretly, you do miss being king. Evicted from the palace, the former king lived out the rest of the, his days on a farm, far from the capital. It was a quiet life, but not without its pleasures. Shortly after King Pat's reign ended, the Inquisitors raided Pat, Count PMA Ver's castle and placed him under arrest for evil magic. As he burned, he screamed the na secret name of the seventh god. The barons, led by fanciful fright, launched a rebellion that accomplished nothing before, besides distracting the king while cunning schemers took the throne. The patricians retreated to their yachts and opium dens, enjoying their obscene wealth while the kingdom starved and suffered. The peasants hoped their hubris would catch up to them, a hope that rested on the newly crowned monarch Alex, turning against their coastal masters. Naive? Only time would tell. King Pat the Prosperous. Three years, three months. I was married to Veronica the East, and my successor is Monarch Alex. The wealthiest noble was Captain Douglas J. Falcon. The poorest noble was Queen Quag Theater. And the kingdom had a totality of authority one, treasury zero, stability four. You may now continue. Completed games will create new saves where you can continue the story of your dynasty. Your second game will include dynasty events, which will include the story, continue the story of previous events. Your nobles will return their previous regions and keep their wealth. All right, hey. I'm gonna take a quick break. And I'm gonna get a sandwich. I might get two sandwiches. And when we come back, we're going to continue the dynasty and see what happens. See you guys in just a few minutes.
go. Hello, my faithful citizens. How are you all doing tonight? I'd like to thank a few of those who are donating to the treasury. It's incredibly appreciated. I'd like to thank Juarez Gorgeous again for gifting five subs. Thank you, sir. Monkeyweed sub. Does casual costume Ashley have more posters of Death Note or Twilight in her room? Considering it is 2005, I'm going to say Death Note. Ham Tyrant sub. Thanks, Ham Tyrant. So did Shrook. I'm sub to say rebellion time. That worked out really well for you guys, didn't it? I chose Raptor sub. So did Shinsuke Mustan, Typhon Twister, and Rue the Day. Thanks, guys. Coffee Kaiju sub. Thank you. Broke. Capcom put Jiggle Physics and RE4 Remake for Ashley's Ballistics. Wokes. Capcom put Jizzle Physics and RE4 Remake for the Regenerator's Absolute Dump Truck Ass. <sighs> yeah, it's true. Myopic Vision sub. Thank you. So did Better Bard. It says hi, Pat. Kazakh sub says, Pat, you're cool. Thank you. Blastio Boots sub, the robust character of Pat's chat has made this game fantastic. I This is some of the most fun I have had ever playing with you guys in like an integration way. This game fucking rules for Twitch streaming. Calder Gaming subbed. Make sure that Mr. Kennedy doesn't get in your castle. You're fucked after that. Eh, doing my best, man. Finch sub, thank you. So did solicit opinions, thank you. Senior BLT sub, Pat, I got my wisdom teeth out today and my face hurts. Please send help. No, just take drugs. And Twilight Krellick sub, long live the revolution, the failed revolution. Let's continue our game, shall we? Let's go. What's gonna happen? <gasps> I'm continuing as Monarch Alex. Join back up, fuckers. You can keep joining, by the way.
That's wild. Patrician start with zero, and the defiance on the others is significant already. I think you guys are keeping the stats you had from last time. You may have won the throne from King Pat. You still got to answer to the castle. As is tradition, they'll decide what happens. Let's get it over with. Should I get my waterproof robes then? Might be for the best, your majesty. Shall we call the nobles in? Toss me in, fuckers. King Alex is a new type of king, a king of the people. Throw the monarch in the river! And so it begins. They pick me up and carry me out to the river, hurling you in the shallow water with a cheer. When you climb back up, Soaking wet, the Chancellor steps forward and places a crown on your head. Is it your imagine? Or some of the noble stifling giggles? Your Majesty, King Pat was the patrician's dancing little puppet. You don't plan on following in his footsteps, do you? But I'm a patrician! Not anymore, you're a monarch. Now listen closely. Patricians own the roads, they own the bridges. They're changing, charging my soldiers to march. Wow, you guys are starting this shit already? Holy fuck! Too much power. I gotta take it back. Hmm. I'm not buying this shit back. I kind of thought you guys would seize it by force for funsies. <sighs> Monopolies are now illegal. Go through the proper channels. Oh, hey! War is gorgeous. Thanks for the five gift subs. Winky, winky, pig, pig time. Stability's now steady. No more monopolies. Ownership of the kingdom is fragmented across all nobles, with a tiny portion going back to the crown. Of course, that means you no longer own as much land as a monarch should. Good to see some balance for training. Hmm. History books don't look kindly upon usurpers, unless, of course, they prove themselves worthy of the crown they stole. When you die, how do you want the kingdom to remember you? as the architect of a new golden age. Suggest over the next few years you focus on improving trade. Once you have an heir, I'll return to discuss how your ambition is progressing. Season over. 
In ancient times, the East was its own proud kingdom. We can bring back those days, but not while the false monarch. Alex, where's the crown? What do you guys want to do? These are all tough. All the counts can't agree. Look at that. They don't know what to do. I'm gonna let this roll for a little bit, because... Hmm. Looks like y'all want to suck on my dick. Okay. They're gonna swap up me for a, a perfect doppelganger, but first they gotta get the spy master. Not only do you need low defiance, you need the lowest defiance. Fellow patricians, I have a good authority. Monarch Alex plans to betray us. Crown me and I'll keep my promises. <sighs> Y'all are dumbasses. authority again, huh? All right. They're going to turn the throne into a commodity that can be bought and sold. But I got to ensure the rule of law is crumbling. To answer your scheme, you got to lower it to four or less. Well, good job, guys. Good job. If they back down from a fight, never. I know what you'll do whatever it takes me to put your rightful queen on the throne. Lower others military. Guys, you don't want to have the same fucking goal as the patricians, you dumbasses. Okay. Enjoy that. You're going for gunpowder again, huh? All right, you fucks. You fucking assholes. You fucking pieces of shit. Honor guard. All right. Guards' loyalties will be divided between you and their region. Of course, you could just hire foreign mercenaries. Of course, you'll be taking gladiators. None of the op options are half as muscly. Battle Britain, 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 huh? Tell me about the veterans of the march. <sighs> Tell me about the coastal gladiators. You know what? 
I'll join the, uh... Alright. Let's see what we got. Mm. It sucks that you guys are all insolent and shit. Men are bare-chested, the women are underdressed, eager to show off their bodies as much as their weaponry. They gather behind your throne and start oiling themselves up. A horror in the east. Monsters been stalking my farm, smashing the doors of cottages and feasting on peasants. Sounds ghastly. Only a few have seen the beast and lived to tell the tale. Survivor tells a garbled... Sorry, gleaming fangs made a mountain of blood-soaked fur. We're not gonna ignore it. Uh, this might be me, actually. Might actually be literally me. Only a 25% chance of success, huh? Regiment. <laughs> you guys have shit military. March in circles for weeks. Hunts, fails to hunt down the elusive beast. When they return, many soldiers appear to have brought back some manner of disease. They're coughing, pale, too weak to hold their sores. Meanwhile, the monster's attacks continue. He reports that it no longer continues to attacks uh, to confines the attack to nighttime. Soon, peasants are afraid to tend to their crops, which lie rotting in the fields. Good job, you fucking idiot. Report to a wild cult. These fanatics call themselves the eighth chapter. Found the arm of a dead god. Arm of a dead god. Colossal limb that moves under its own power. Tall as five men, long as ten horses, clad in shining steel. Dread to think what it could be capable of. We gotta do something about this. Now you guys figure it out. We'll see how you handle it. <laughs> oh, that's, that, that's what I would have picked, actually. So thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Nature of subterfuge depends that those in charge remain in the dark. Mm hmm. Season is over. Start it. Let's see what you got. I think I think I know what's gonna happen. Hmm. If you guys hit me at like zero authority again, you're just gonna rebel and fuck yourselves over again. So I'm just letting you know. Interesting. 
Authority go down, but my stability is crazy. Fucking, the fucking goddamn shit has never been more stable. <sighs> a taxing issue. Let's find a spouse, shall we? Yeah, let's get a spouse now. Give me some girls. Let's see what we got. He ran to the patricians as we agreed, right? Yeah, sure, dude. Totally. Totally, bitch. A laughing stock. Hmm. <sighs> I love his work. Uh huh. I'll tend it myself. Climb out of the stage. Congrats. Stability and authority back up. King Biffo. Your Majesty, help us. Lady Patrician Fagutwu has been bleeding us dry, he has. What is she doing? Attacks are ten times higher than ever been. I can't afford to feed me cows. It's true. Lady Patrician Fugubu has been taxing her peasants at least twice as much as the next highest noble. It's been a hard year, esteemed highness. I barely have any gold. I'm just doing what I can to stay afloat. You guys want to vote? You're having a hard time. Don't worry about it. Excellent. We'll leave you saw sense. Think of her cows. My cows! Over the next few months, Lady Patrician Fugubu becomes rich. The other patricians follow her example gleefully. Soon enough, farms on the coast are destitute. Cattle are starving and so are the peasants. Only patricians are fat and wealthy. And man, they want to tax themselves in oblivion? Fuck it. Alright, well, congrats. Count Baby Hot Pockets is hosting a dinner party. What an utter disaster. Not only are we clashing with the monarch on a daily basis, our relationship is the worst in the entire kingdom. Spymaster will never trust us. How goes the search for lookalike? Not well. I found a peasant with the wrong shaped nose, the wrong colored eyes, and a wooden leg. Don't let that discourage you. Keep searching. Our doppelganger's out there, I'm sure of it. Count's aim is to be the region with the lowest defiance. Yeah, yeah, they got the first shipment. Careful, you'll blow us up. Incredibly powerful, yep. Next stage, they must raid their trade to five or more in four seasons. Shit. Mm, well. Enjoy your tax counts. Eligible options. Found three potential matches. One eligible young woman from each. Choose wisely. I know. The cat chancellor leads you to the Great Hall where they've arranged three portraits. Let's see what we got. First portrait. Natashka, eldest daughter of the Eastern Pistol Happy Man Dynasty. Good looking one, huh? Not a bad word said. Everybody likes her. Spends most of her time with the fencing master, mastering the blade. Got in trouble with the Inquisition a few years ago. Didn't come to anything. She's intriguing. From the coast, we have Petronella, the wealthy heiress to Lady Patricia Narrell's estate. Spends most of her time in the solitude of her villa. Don't know much about her. She seems cool. Finally, we have the March's offering. Ulrica, sign of the prestigious full sec bloodline. Typical baroness, really. Loud and brash. Mostly well meaning. She can always be found at the car table, drunk as a skunk, betting away her inheritance. When she's deep in the cuts, apparently she matters about revenge. I'm picking a candidate. You'll anger the other regions, but you'll gain a lifelong alliance. I have made my fucking decision. I would like to marry Ulrika of the March. Oh! 
Oh, the counts are so mad. Oh, they're so mad. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I had to deal with the coast. How about you go suck my dick and smell my nuts, whore? All right. All right, that was too hard. I'm sorry. I'm getting into it. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Just, I'm getting... <laughs> the, the monarchy's getting into my brain. <laughs> All right. The Sorcerer Opery. Spy returns. Good day. I found much. A sorcerer called Etrivanda Opery is drawing power from a hulking artifact buried deep in the soil. Preaching that the time of the church is at an end, and this limb of the eighth god will bring freedom and prosperity. Hmm. Okay. All right. I'm gonna veto this because it has a zero percent chance. <laughs> The only one of these that has any chance of success is sending the spy to reach out. I know you guys are going to be split on this. The assassination is going to go bad. I'm going to tell you right now. It's going to fail. It's going to fucking fail. And your bullshit's going to get all fucked up in the counts, dude. Okay? All right. Well, they're going to make friends. Weeks pass. There are reports of underground explosions. Well, at last, a letter from your agent. The sorcerer has agreed to a meeting. Novels mutter mercilessly, but the matter is settled. You shall go to the east. The true monster. Remember that I told you about a monster eating peasants? Yes. I have reason to believe that the culprit may be one of my fellow counts. Count Hushtha, to be precise. The peasants believe Count Hushtha transforms into a colossal beast every once every seven nights. Do we know of anything like this happening before? Only a legend. King Carvac too is said to turn into a beast and slaughter his servants. But in the day he was mild mannered as a baby duck. No memory. Perhaps the same is true here. What should I do? Pray, do not call a public vote. It would embarrass Count Hush the greatly for no reason. I shall arrest him. Very well. When your knights arrive, they attack by an enormous beast with coal black fur and, fur and claws like scythes. Slays dozens of knights. Once finally wounded beyond hope of recovery, it turns back into human shape. Count Hushtha lies on the floor, frail and limp and soaked in blood. Please release me of my curse. Mm. I'm gonna kill him. Your Grace, I wish we could have found a better way. Count may have been a monster, but he still had noble blood and deserved better treatment. Well, eat shit. In a dingy seaside tavern, two patricians meet to plot. Good news, the palace officials have been accepting my bribes. They've become more open to corruption. What are you getting in return? Oh, not much. Better seat in the council chamber. Access to Monarch's rooms, that sort of thing. The important thing is Monarch's staff are getting used to selling their principles. So what next? Palace staff are one thing, but the true prize would be the loyalty of the Chancellor and the rest of the Monarch's inner circle. To do so, we need to demolish their respect. The kingdom's in chaos. They'll need to see the Monarch as an incompetent fool, and he'll be much more likely to open to our bribes. They must lower stability! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! We're going to adopt a call for unity. Thank you. Oh, man, that's crazy. The Counts of the East are on the verge of rebellion with a whopping one military. <clears throat> Sorry, Counts. Let's hang out with the cult. the dead of night, you begin a secret journey to the 8th chapter. Just you, your spy master, and your honor guard, disguised as common soldiers, rattling away in the back of a worn cart. 
As a wooded grove, you're greeted by a gaggle of wide-eyed folk with a number of eight branded on their foreheads. They push a giant boulder to reveal a cave entrance. Be on your guard, Your Majesty. You're led down a long tunnel, at the end of which rests an enormous metal arm, the limb of a fallen giant. Etrevan stands atop it. I am Etrevan dot Opery. They call me the Father in the East. Welcome, Your Majesty. I'm pleased you chose to meet with me. You bear witness to his arm, the arm of the Eighth. Surely you must now believe a prophecy. How might we live in peace? The olive branch extended. I had not thought to see it. A lot, my father, followers, and I, a substantial piece of Eastern land. We will worship our God in peace, and you may worship yours. Yeah, okay. Talk for hours, working on the fine details of the treaty between the kingdom and the eighth chapter. By the time you return to the capital, word is the spread of your peace deal. Nobles are fucking pissed, especially the counts, whose lands you just gave the fuck away. Now we condone heresy within our borders? This is a sign of the end times. Yeah, well. Wow. You guys are really mad. But, um... That one military is pretty gross, too. Oh, fuck, patricians! You've fucking started food riots! You stupid idiots! <sighs> Famine on the coast grows worse by the day. Riots are breaking out in all the major townships, from Thalassus to Calport. Starving mobs are pillaging bakeries, greeneries, and merchant houses. What are we to do? I'll set a call for unity. Oh wow, could go any which way. like the patricians are going to buy things from the counts. Trade went down in the coast and trade exploded in the east. Don't be upset. It's just good business. Immense quantities of surplus or grain are diverted from the east to the coast. And once the, once the peasants have bread again, the riots cease. That's more than enough to tide them over. Royal wedding. Hey, Counts, how's your trade? Sounding good, huh? Your wedding to Ur, Lucra, is naturally the talk of the kingdom. Nobles and peasants alike travel across the kingdom to attend. For a weekend today, the capital's a giant party. Feels like you're only one blah, 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 blah. Do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife? I do. I now pronounce you and married in the eyes of the kingdom. Ooh, authority went up. Stability went up. Your new wife, Ulrika, dances so vigorously she spills wine all over herself. By the time you find yourself alone, it's past midnight and you're tired. Good God, I'm so drunk! So yet somehow, not drunk enough. More wine! Servants, more wine! That's the spirit. <sighs> what do you do in your spare time? Oh, you know, drinking, gambling, having fun. What'd you think of the wedding? Damn beautiful from start to finish. I had a whale of a time. Shall we go to bed? No time like the present. 
Yeah, I'm gonna fuck my wife and make her pregnant! Ah. Uh. Currently has no air. Uh the the fucking uh the fucking barons are running away with it this time, gang. I don't know if you guys are noticing. A plague of rats. Baroness in Isane 14 strides into the council chambers, distraught, waving a dead rat. The fields and parts of the marsh are overrun by vermin. We've no more poison. Can't cope. Mm. Hmm, interesting. How will we? What do you guys want to do? I don't know what. I don't know what we want here. I would like to applaud the community for hailing my call to unity. Enjoy the cats. Can't thank you enough, my liege. Send a caravan of cats. By the time they reach their destination, they're hungry and angry. The perfect rat catching. Soon, the rats are gone, and the most households in the march have a very satisfied cat guarding their food. You hope kittens don't become a problem. Your Highness, unfortunately, there have been some strange things in our newly built library. I'd rather keep it quiet for now. Although the nobles can be so judgmental. I don't want to think we don't have a grip on the library. Tell me more. Odd symbols are being painted on the bricks. Nobody knows where they're coming from, but those who look at them too long go restless and feverish. No, the council will hear about it. We're going to do something about it. Sucks how the guards aren't going to be able to contain the problems within the uh, barony. Ah, oh, they failed. Their reports are sloppy. They're more interested in playing cards and drinking on duty than being vigilant. In the end, you're forced to relieve them after a minor scandal when they drunkenly knock the books out of a professor's hands and call them a four-eyed wimp. Mmm, that hurt my bullshit. Debt collection. You're quite surprised when Count Bakasugoy counters you in the back passage of your castle. Apologize for surprising you like this, but of an urgent matter I thought you'd want to hear in private. Your wife, how can I put this? She owes me a lot of money. Gambling debts mainly. She borrowed quite a lot from me to recover some lost funds, but now it's time to collect. She's been avoiding. Oh, you're going to jail. Counts don't look too favorably on your unwarranted arrest, but a few nights in the darkest cells of the dungeon are enough to persuade Bakasukoi it's in his best interest to let these debts go. You release him once the agreement's been reached. He'll think twice before threatening my queen. Well. The fucking, uh... The fucking barons are gonna run away with it, guys.
They are going to fucking steal it. For real. Oh! The counts are trying to get their little itty bitty baby military up. Oh no. <laughs> oh, look at them. Oh, look at them. Oh, man, what are we up to? Oh, man, what are we up to? <laughs> All right. Trade is up and Miwatawi is up. About my hair. Your marriage has grown strong like an old castle wall, though it began politically, it's blossomed into something like love. High time you thought about an heir. Congratulations. Wedding was a magnificent affair. Something's missing. You need an heir. You need somebody young. This loyalty is assured. My wife and I will have a child together. The traditional method. No one will object. I'll arrange for you to take a month off from ruling so you can uh, get down to business. Gunpowder smuggling. The barons of the march are attempting to amass a store of gunpowder. What can I do? They've established some contacts, no doubt at their great expense. Without the coin to purchase, their plot will fail. Fortunately, their trade is booming. There's no doubt stockpiling massive amounts. You bring the revelations, which the barons wholeheartedly deny to the council. Guys. What do they need? Do they need six or do they need seven? They need seven? Delaying won't do it. Can't touch him. The only thing that they that you guys can do is delay them. He heavy tariffs won't do anything. Or you could just do, allow them to do whatever they please, but, you know. I would highly recommend to everyone who is not a Baron to threaten them with sanctions. It'll at least stop them for one season. <laughs> wow, you guys are dumbasses. Alright. They don't respond lightly to threats of sanctions, but they're not willing to jeopardize trade relations over some enterprising merchants. Gunpowder import has slowed, but it hasn't stopped. Barons will not be evaluated until the end of next season. Oh, the symbols are back! Is it still happening? Yeah, but now someone's carving them. We've discovered a network of abandoned tunnels underneath the library. Tunnel walls are carved with those sim symbols. I tried going inside, but my legs wouldn't move. Couldn't do anything but run away. What should we do? Hmm. Not using my money. But you can flood them or send somebody to check it out. So apparently when you're not playing this with Twitch and you're playing it with friends, you can play with like 24 different people. All right, the scholar's gonna check it out. Historian from Quayle University makes her way to the Marcher Library. Never seen sigils like this. Could be a dialect of later Valesian, but in the March, at least a mystery worth solving. You wait her results. So does Nahal Amini, who's running low on candles, wine, and patience. I have to live with this shabby specimen? That's right, Baron, you do. End the season. Sitting on a bench outside a sun-pleached villa, two patricians of the coast meet to plot their latest scheme. Beautiful day, birds are singing, markets in full swing. You hear that on the wind? You can make out the laughter of a children playing a game. Delightful. 
Wrong, it's horrible! The kingdom is totally serene, and our plans are in ruins. The monarch's advisors are happy. We can't buy their loyalty yet. Believe me, I've tried. Pestrician's aim is to lower stability to four or less. Hmm. Well, there is no downside to count taxing the counts. Uh, word from the university. I've returned for visiting the library. What'd you find? She shows you her sketches. As you look at them, faint warmth plays over your skin. Something itches inside your skull. What the fuck is that? There, it's actually protective magic, your majesty. Somebody's warding the library against some great evil. Don't think they mean harm at all. I wonder if this could be useful. The common folk might not like it. It's evil magic. You must find the perpetrator and punish them. Hmm. <clears throat> Huh. Hmm. Religion would go down. But farming, stability, and defiance would go up. You know what? I'm only gonna veto... No. You know what? Have at it. I'm good with you guys completely deciding this amongst yourselves. I have no strong opinions on this whatsoever. Looks like we're using them everywhere. Pillars of any new buildings. Very well. What would the High Inquisitor think? As it turns out, he's outraged. The Council has spoken. Faith has gone down, and my authority has been mocked. Several mystery plays are performed, including monarchs who look especially similar to you. Ooh. However, the symbols do have an effect. In granaries, they keep vermin at bay. In vaults, they deter thieves. In houses, they keep out intruders. And we're a little bit safer. Trade, 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 farming, 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 stability. Undercutting. I want to speak to you about a delicate matter, your most august majesty. It concerns the fur trade. Explain a bit further. There's one thing the barons know how to do. It's hunt. We all know they take too much pleasure. But it's not just for their pleasure. Commercial hunting is important. Now, the counts are actually the biggest buyers of marsh furs. Very useful in those cold, bleak winter nights in the east. They land their coats like it's going out of fashion. Traditionally, patricians have facilitated it, making sure that a fair deal was reached. Now the counts buy from the barons directly. They're cutting us out of the deal. You can't let them get away with it. That sounds pretty clever to me. Your, hi your hi serene highness, please, just call council vote, will you? What if I just pay you to forget about this? That would offset our losses. You dig some funds out of the treasury so the patricians don't feel so hard done by. Better to take this to a vote than potentially anchoring the other regions. In a few weeks' time, patricians have forgotten about the furs. The other regions are happy to continue unhindered. Money makes the world go round. Time for a fishy wedding. Your Majesty, the Archduke has invited you to a forthcoming we wedding. Great nation, Isle of Saul is just pirates and cutthroats. Anyway, he's marrying a fish. Groom is finfolk, perfectly sapient. Church doesn't agree. I am going to veto. Attending the wedding. I will not attend this wedding. 
no matter what happens. Interesting. You guys want me to be polite about the fish people. Alright. Polite it is. Must these regards be warm? Can't they be icy cold? I'll compose a polite refusal with accompanying congratulations. This is a shame. This was a chance for real diplomatic progress. When the common folk of the coast hear about the Archduke's wedding, they're broadly supportive of the Union. Public opinion turns against the overly secure church. Strict church. Well, guys, the Barons are definitely going to win the, the second round. Somewhere in a dark cellar, a nervous Baron is showing his guests a stupendous cache of explosive gunpowder. Behold! Great God. By my life, black gold dust. What are those? Cannons, my friend. Cannons and muskets. Courtesy of the Republic of Kurth. They are very happy with our business. Now to decide what to do with it. Once we show our hand, there's no going back. Oh. Shit. How high does stability have to get? You can sneak this stuff anywhere. We'll have to lull them all in our false sense of security. To mention the fact the roads need to be safe. You have to keep it at 10. By the way, guys, if you don't fuck with stability, if you, if you, if you, if you don't tank stability right now, they will instantly win. Your August Majesty, your esteemed highness, something most strange has occurred in the sea. An island has risen. It's true, they witnessed the island celebrate their marriage. It's terrible news. The island of immense strategic importance. Can't let it fall into sailors' hands. I don't know what to do here. I can try and fuck the fish again. I didn't do very good last time. You guys want me to try and fuck the fish man again? my best i'm gonna i'm gonna try and fuck the fish man if that's what you guys want capital idea how do we get here what were we saying this is sin a few months ago just seduce the fish man you wimp what the mr earl's trying to say that you're unattached and the chancellor of the kingdom you make a far better match for the fin folk oh my god i fucking we're sending the chancellor to do it your majesty listen to reason don't send me underwater to propose a marriage to some damp little frog creature <laughs> council's decided dude just talk to him see if there's a spark there won't be a bully spark. We'll be underwater. With great luck, since your chancellor is eventually persuaded to go on a clandestine visit to one of the Finfolk's undersea villages. Bankruptcy looms. Treasury is almost empty, your highness. What do you suggest we do? Apart from raising taxes, we got few options. Could get a bank loan, sell some jewels, perhaps crack open some tombs. Most are buried with piles of gold, so I've heard. Time to crack open some fucking tombs. 
The bare gold ain't doing nobody some good. Time to desecrate some graves. Under the royal mausoleums dug and looted. The result's quite a bounty. Gold masks, heaps of coins, precious jewels. Not everyone's as practical as your treasurer, however. The church denounces you as a grave robber. Nobles and peasants alike are disgusted by your greed. Mmm, what are you talking about? Mmm, nothing's wrong with the march. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> the fuck is going on? This calls for a celebration, I guess. Definitely not an old witch who lives at the border of my lands, and I definitely haven't been having money troubles. Most importantly, she didn't offer me a fortune in exchange for just a drop of blood, an offer which I absolutely didn't accept. I'm confused. Ever since I didn't accept the witch's bargain, I haven't found myself obeying her every command. I definitely still rule over my estate, not her. Furthermore, she didn't forbid me from telling you any of this, and I'm not using negative statements to bypass magic. I think you mean the opposite of what you say. No, your majesty, that's not the case. Let's see if we can lift the curse, buddy. After a week confined to a cold iron box with nothing to eat but salt, the magic stops affecting him so strongly. They're even able to talk about their ordeal directly. I always tolerated the bloody witch. She'd sell medicine to the peasants and help them find lost sheep. I never suspected she was capable of this. We need to call a vote. Send a regiment back to take my stolen lands. I think we should burn her. Also, if you agree, you'll get money. Anybody who agrees with me gets money. It's the golden choice. Slapping my tum tums out here. Well, they failed, and your military is weaker. While the march troops arrive, the land itself fights them, souls, swallows them whole. Trees snatch them up and tear them apart. By the time they fight their way through, the witch has already escaped, along with the remained of Krekhart's cold. The peasants have no memory of their time under the witch's rule, but the churches have been burned, with profane messages drawn across their child walls, and the fields have been sown with salt. Wow! Raise it to stability, 10. Have the lowest defiance. Lower the kingdom stability to four. Hmm. Defiance is too low. Defiance is too low. You guys could rebel, but your little count pussies will get fucking fucked. Sorry. Your heir. Should I die, I ask that my crown be passed down to? My son. By designating heir, you've cemented stability. My grace may be the first to congratulate you on the birth of your son. What's his name? Alex the Second. Most pleasing, your highness. I'm sure little Alex too will grow up to be a chip off the old block. <sighs> Marrying under sea. Your Majesty, I've returned from my underwater visit to the Infolk Village. Well, there's no easy way to say this. I'd like you to meet my husband, Prince Clorb. It's not quite the right pronunciation, but I love that you're there trying. So there was a spark! My magic reed slipped out of my mouth. I almost drowned until he saved me with a kiss. After that, it was love. At least this definitely means the Archduke of Saul won't be getting a hold on that island. Glorb assured me that it's ours now. To do with this, we please. Absolutely. Anything for my wonderful spouse. Let's see what the council wants to do with the new island. I won't mention my new husband. It'll only complicate matters. Oh, shit. <sighs> well, doesn't matter. Counts, you gotta rebel. I'm sorry I made fun of your pussies, but you have to rebel right now. <laughs> I... 
I'm sorry, you have to burn it all down now. It is absolutely vital that you burn it all down. New lines, an empty little rock devoid of vegetation, but it's a perfect place to build a fortress. Soon, the coast has commanded the surrounding warriors. Waters. Meanwhile, with the Archduke weddings called off, he becomes the object of mockery. He'll survive. After all, there are plenty more fish in the sea. You can't rebel anymore. You can't. An urgent meeting. Spymaster. She, 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 what's this? New satirical poet. They call themselves the Sapphire. Could be of a group. My agents haven't on Earth more than that. Leaves through the papers. Pretty funny, whoever they are. Sapphire mostly turns their ire towards the Counts. Rampant and cruel Counts of the East. Torment won't soothe the terrible beast. Yeah, that's funny. I agree with you. These poems are becoming hugely popular. The Sapphire holds the Counts responsible for the lack of robust military. They do have a point. If this carries on, the Counts may pressure the Crown to step in, or the people of the East may grow discontented. This should be investigated. Spymaster bows. Oh, God damn it. I think we lost, gang. <gasps> prison! Build a prison! Build a prison! Build a prison right now! If you build the prison, they won't win! Lock them up! Lock them all up! Stop the count! I know I got a lower stability with my choices. I know I'm doing too good of a job with this kingdom. <sighs> my ambition. At the start of your reign, you said you want to be the architect of a new golden age. You've succeeded. The kingdom has never been more prosperous. Well done. Shut down your noble schemes. You need to build on that reputation. Your advisors have some ideas. Have you heard of the Scepter of Ages? It's an ancient lost artifact forged by Queen Alma the Wise. There's a legend that any monarch who recovers it will rule over a golden age. My advice on the other hand would be to infiltrate each region with loyal spies. Defeat their schemes and schemes of our own. But the Chancellor has other ideas. I'm going to make a big spy network. Wise decision. I'll be recruiting spies. We'll send them abroad across the kingdom in the guise of traveling bards. This will require a fine touch. Your overall priority is to raise the kingdom's stability and overall trade as much as you can. And of course, there can't be open rebellion amongst the nobles. They, they still haven't given me a goal. They still, I still don't have a goal. No, I mean, I literally, no, I don't have one. Seditious songs. Good afternoon, your majesty. I have news for you about the hysterical poet, the sapphire. The one who doesn't like the counts. Indeed. I've discovered her identity. There's no soft way to say it. It's Ulrica! How? I had no idea she was such an artist. You should speak to her about this. You find her lounging in the garden. I lost a couple of games and I turned around and won three in a row. Something in the matter? I'd like to ask you about the poems. Oh yeah, I do enjoy writing in my spare time. I know you're the Sapphire. Oh, by the ninth. Well, the cat's out of the bag. 
Why do you dislike the Count so much? When I was younger, Count Blastio Boots humiliated my father. And to make matters worse, he cheated. If he had my father's wine spike beforehand, so his reflexes would be slowed. After that horrible day, I suppose to expose the malice of the Counts. The dreadful cheat, the terrible joust, the barons must always be ousted. I haven't finished that one yet. So, all the... Oh, sorry to hear that. Thank you. So what now? I'm just getting started. Can't carry on writing poems like this, huh? If it means so much to you, I won't stop you. I knew you'd agree. How splendid! The mysterious sapphire continues to poke fun at the counts under the east until the other nobles start quoting lines from the poems under their breath during council meetings. Are you fucking serious? Your Majesty, I wish to speak with the situation in the East. Counts have been a matter of suspicion for those in the Church. Now idolatry and devil worship are common. Let me send some of my best missionaries. It's for the good of the realm. You have my permission. Wonderful, I'll make the prep right away. The other regions are less than thrilled that you did not consult the Council, but it doesn't stop the mission from going ahead. Well, shit. The results are less than promising. After being run out of more than a dozen towns, the missionaries head back to the capital. Still, the Archbishop hopes that the preaching might have laid the groundwork. Guys, you can't rebel. Guys, come on, you can't rebel. Come on. Come on, stop. Stop. I'm sorry I made fun of you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay. It's... Listen. It's I'm sorry, okay? Uh, look, I'll attack everyone equally. See, it's fine. An offer from mercenaries. Band of mercenaries have offered to support you. They call themselves the Iron Mercy. Don't know much, but we can't afford to turn away. How much are they asking for? A thousand gold. Could be worse, right? Better run it by the council. You got hey, you guys get money. You guys get money if you if you buy the mercenaries. Everybody wants the money. Everybody wants the money. Yeah, ooh, the finger thing means money. All right. Iron Mercy, arrive on your shores. When your marshal reports, she can't hide a satisfied smile. They're professional. Each kitted out in full plate wielding swords bigger than me. They're disciplined of solid command. Let's hope they're loyal. Ooh! Ooh, ooh, ooh! Their military is pathetic. It's having a real impact on enemy morale. Money well spent. Rebellion! Long last, the Counts have reached their boiling point. You're confronted in your throne room by Countess Lady Aveline, and your smile sharp as a scalpel. Fuck! The Counts of the East will bring you down. Pretender to the throne will rise up and fight for Tatiana. Formal declaration. Next time we see each other, it's go time. I'll see your head on a spike, bitch. Countess Lady Eveline strides from your throne room. What are our chances? Pretty good. Counts aren't exactly military powerhouse. I hope they didn't persuade other regions to join. How'd they get this bad? Leader of the rebellion is Count Pistol Happy Man. He's citing the time you jailed a noble for trying to collect him some debts. And now I sold the land. Not to mention your plundering of the royal tombs. Really? Because of that? Well, that's their excuse. It's not about you. It's a power grab. Civil war. Kingdom is divided. There'll be a lot of death and suffering. Can't wait. Let's dig out the trebuchet. Can we get through one fucking day without you pieces of shit rebelling? Can't we all have a real government? <gasps> There's Pistol Happy Man. It's been a long time coming. Over 300 years ago, the East was conquered. But before then, we were our own rulers. The glory days. Indeed, that's why we gotta rise up. 
By placing Tatiana on the throne, we'll reclaim it. But first, we've got to decide on tactics. I ask you, how shall we strike first? Bring to strike against the patricians? If we suspect the barons may join our call, we can call them in a war. They'll be more likely to join us if the baron's authority is low. We could also call upon the church to condemn the monarch. Or finally, you could send an assassin to nip this in the bud. Well, guys. Oh, you guys, you can't. Barons, no. Barons, don't help them. Can they force you guys into rebellion? <laughs> Secret message to the barons. Too long have you suffered under the yoke. The kingdom on soft. We need your help. Why do we never think of things this way? The barons are emboldened. Of course, they can only act if they're... Oh, that's how... It okay, that's how that works. Okay. End the season. Now oh, I'm good with these. Rebellion report. Loyalists are winning. I'm a little confused about my goal. I feel like like it didn't it didn't give me numbers. You know, I know I look at the crown, but it didn't give me numbers to hit. Do you know what I mean? It said as high as you can. Hmm. I guess we'll figure it out. Sickness spreads. What kind of sickness is going on in the march? Done a lot of digging, a lot of retreats, and a lot of graves. What can we do about it? Let the disease run its course. We'll have lost a lot of soldiers. We can't afford to lose. I'm not sure how much we can do. Perhaps the council can see a way forward. Guys, we need some doctors to help the people in the march. It's going to cost some money. But we need to help y'all. It's important. I'll be broke. We'll deal with that later. We'll deal with that later. All right. Doctors are going to help you out. Simple remedy. Garlic, wormwood, spina goat. And we mustn't forget leeches. Lots of them. Gathering enough ingredients to treat a whole army don't come cheap. Great expense. Best doctors go out to cure the troops. Hopefully they're worth the money. Doctors get to... Ah, oh, work! Some of your soldiers even benefit, but it quickly becomes clear the doctors are fighting a losing battle after they also catch the sickness. By the time the sickness was finished cutting through the marcher troops, hundreds of soldiers are dead, and morale is plummeted. A great battle. Vast armies darken the landscape like the shadows of clouds. Flags are flying, drums are pounding, the kingdom is gripped in civil war. At least that's what you imagine. Most of your time spent in the palace. Your Majesty, the Army of the East is advancing on the capital, led by that treacherous Kerr, Count Pistol Happy Man. The commander of our Loyalist forces is in the march. If they march now, they'll intercept the Counts in a matter of days. Uh, alternatively, they could join forces with the Army of the Coast. It's risky, but they have a higher chance of defeating them. What are your orders? Oh, the Barons and the... Hmm... Barons can do it themselves. I'll relay your orders. Hopefully they'll do with their toad. We have our orders, but should we follow them?
Thanks, guys. Whole city holds its breath. You stew in your palace waiting for your marshal's return. Finally, she bursts in the throne room. Looks more furious than you've seen her. The cowardly barons defied your orders to turn their army to link up with the patricians. Afraid of facing a real fight on their own. We can only hope this was the right decision. Have some confidence. Too late for now. All comes down. The fate of the kingdom hands in the balance. We'll prevail. That's the spirit. I gotta be going. I got a lot to do. It becomes clear that the marcher's army's retreat has given the counts free reign to pillage and plunder the march. The rampaging eastern troops descend on farms like locusts, taking everything to feed thousands of hungry soldiers. Meanwhile, shops, churches, manors are plundered, the stolen loot shipped back to the east. While the march suffers, the marcher forces successfully link up with the patricians. Now the joint army of the barons and the patricians rush to meet the counts of open warfare, and the winter will end your reign of preservant. Let's muster this army. Along the eastern border, a few campfires are dotted. Some soldiers mill about randomly. Being scared, the Count's troops are gathering, but it's distinctly unimpressive. This is the best force we could muster, huh? No, as a matter of fact, this is only the beginning. I've considered several proposals to bolster the army for the trials. You guys are pieces of shit, you know that? Are we sure that we can trust these mercenaries? What if the monarch outbids us? That's the beauty of it. They'll never work with the monarch as a matter of principle. When they arrive in the east, it becomes apparent how different their customs are from the locals. They pray to Kal Dovaga, the machine god, and attempt to remind him that the world exists. They claim their swords are alive and will grow angry if sheathed for too long. They bathe every single day. But they're perfectly capable of enacting hideous violence in exchange for money, and that's all the counts need. Wow, guys, you got up to number three. That's great. Where does where does it show my exact thing? This is really frustrating. Like you guys get a, a, a thing that shows you yours is paused during rebellions. Oh, of course. Rebellion report. Eh, one one. A chemical discovery. In gardens of the royal palace, your marshal runs up to you, dragging a large chunk. Develop something for the war, you gotta see it. Alchemist from my estate's been working on it for some time. Unpacking the trunk, revealing a complicated and foul-smelling machinery that looks like a large set of backpipes. But tell me what it does. It creates fire. Spray flames right across a room. But don't use it inside a room, unless you want to burn down with you inside. Fancy demonstration? I'll try it myself. That's my monarch. He directs each step. You pour a smoking chemical into a spout. Pull the lever, twist a valve, and then... Fire streams from it. Sprays all across the garden, singeing the leaves of a nearby bush. Bravo, bravo! A few of these things in the infantry could turn the tide of a rebellion. Give it to me for free. Maybe it's not 0%. Maybe it's 1%. Well, fuck. I guess we'll just wait for it to arrive. Takes a while for it to arrive and figuring out the machine is tricky, dangerous endeavor. During the next skirmish, the marshal leads a squad of fire-throwing shock troops who march ahead, carrying their infernal machines. But when the time comes, the squad forgets their training. Fire sprays upwards, downwards, backwards, anyway but forwards. The eastern troops pick off those who weren't at Rue Sash. The squad is wiped out. I 
There's no more talk of fire for some time. Keep them sweet. You must have noticed the parents aren't happy. The rebels have a keen eye and they'll take advantage. The march joins, we'll be in trouble. It's high time you ask them what they need. Very well. Baron's whisper amongst them. Bloody hell, what's the point of the session? Since when do the monarch cares about what we have to say? What's there to complain about? We're all working together. I just hope we can all have a productive time. Well, god damn it. <laughs> um... This authority and military thing is going poorly. Slightly poorly. Break the tie. Military advisor time. Group of barons in charge of an emergency advisory committee. Several weeks later, the marshal comes to see you. They're a pain. Every time I make an order, they squabble over details. It makes everything take hours. Fobbing them off of paperwork, but they don't like it. Sure enough, the committee dissolves in arguments. The barons are not impressed. The failed committee hampers the war effort. Not only that, but the patricians feel the march is getting special treatment. Soon they complain. A month ago, the battle was averted. The barons and the patricians are all the stand between the council and the capital. Final battle, deciding the fate. I'll send word to the patricians. It's time to strike. Oh, yeah. You can't let this rebellion win, guys. You can't let these loser pussy counts fucking boss you around. Can you believe that? These purple little bitches with their veiny assholes. <laughs> when she finally returns, her arm's a bloody sling, but she has a triumphant gleam. Marshal, report! Caught the counts by surprise. They were forwarding a river. Classic pincer. Patricians and barons attacked from the other. To our surprise, the eastern soldiers rallied and fought us like tigers. Thought the battle was a sure victory, but it turned into a drawn-out slog. Early in the battle, got knocked off my horse. Thank the knife from my armor. But I broke my arm and got knocked out, so the rest of this is second hand. Even though we're fighting the patricians and barons, and from two directions, the counts held all the line for hours. Didn't do them much good in the end. Uh, they inflicted terrible casualties. Their morale is finally broken. We slaughtered them. The river is clogged with their corpses. So we've won? Yes, unless something totally unexpected happened. At that moment, frantic soldier bursts in. We were served from our scouts. I don't know how to say this. Spit it out. The Counts was to split their forces. The army we defeated was a diversion. They've got another regiment making its way through the Crown Lands. They'll be outside the capital in a matter of days. The patricians are too far away to help. What do we do? Time to prepare for a siege. Got a lot of work to do. Build up the capital's fortifications. Stockpile food. Don't worry, the slash ditch ploy of a defeated enemy. We need to outlast the siege, and the patricians will come to our rescue. <sighs> I don't even know what you guys want. We're having a trouble here. You're going to tone down stability and increase the Count's military, huh? <laughs> ah, my fucking phone fell down. What do you got? Military stability. 
weak leg again. <sighs> Loyalists are uh, having a time of it. Bankrupt! Here it is. She holds a single gleaming coin. What's that? The treasury in its entirety. There's nothing left. You're broke. Is that why they're all gone? Yeah, but it's not the service you should worry about. Outside the palace, something rumbles like st thunder. Now what? None of your soldiers have been paid. They're no longer interested in defending the capital. They've ignored your orders and joined the rebels. Hear that rumbling? The counts are marching through the streets. Time to fucking run. You run out to the stables, saddle a horse, and gallop through the streets as fast as you can with nothing but the clothes on your back and a single gold coin. Behind you, the soldiers overwhelm the few remaining loyal staff and loot the palace. You urge your horse onward, leaping over fountains and crashing through market stalls. Temporary setback. You'll see the rest of the resident you reign out in exile, slowly gathering support to reclaim your throne. It'll be hard work, but you're sure you can do it. You're Monarch Alex. You can do anything. You're not looking where you're going. You run first into a low-hanging sign, knocking you off your horse and dashing your brains out all over the cobblestones. Your last thoughts are of the rebellion. Counts have won by default. Shame. You'd hope to put up more of a fight. Out of money and facing an uprising by their own soldiers, Monarch Alex fled the capital only to bash their brains out on a low-hanging sign. The patricians succeeded in turning the palace into a hotbed of bribery and corruption, but what's new about that? They failed to gain the throne and lost money in the process. Bad investment. In haste to complete their scheme, the barons mishandled their gunpowder, blew up in their faces literally. All that was found of barren lime grapes was a pair of boots with feet still inside. With the kingdom bankrupt and nobody else willing to try and fix it, Tatiana, leader of the Eastern Rebellion, seized the moment and and seize the throne. Monarch Alec the Worthless. Again, three years and change. Nobles, the wealthiest noble was mild and the poorest was Proto-Raptor GX. And the kingdom had great trade for a time. Well, that was great. Uh, I'll definitely be coming back to this. That was awesome. So if I if there had been no rebellion, I would have won, huh? Ugh. Maybe I shouldn't have made fun of y'all so much. Oh, I just got a text message. Oh, my wife. All right. Next time, we'll be playing with different um, different people. Yeah, I'm going to tell Paige to stream this as well. And when Paige streams it, I will be in one of the uh, the count uh, or, or the, the barons or, or what have you. <sighs> All right, let's thank a people. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. That was a ton of fun. Uh, I might change my schedule to actually stream that again this week because that was a blast. That was super fun. Like crazy, crazy super fun. I don't know. Hey, Mastermind Goblin sub. Thanks, man. I swear on my ancestors, the barony will have your king pet head, King Pat. Jokes aside, love you, Pat. Hope to see you more RE4 soon. Sorry, the barony is the only one that didn't win. That and me. Thanks again, Juarez Gorgeous, for the five subs. And Tyranex resubbed. GG Pat as a count. I'm happy you pushed us to rebel against you for the win. Yeah, that really blew up in my fucking face, huh? That really blew up in my face. All right. Well, I'm going to point y'all. Who the fuck is this? I don't know who this is. Oh, let's go. Let's go fucking. Uh, let's go raid Bricky. Yeah, let's go raid Bricky. And Warhammer Man. He's playing Last of Us. I fucked that up. Boop. All right. Y'all have a good day. I am out of here. I will see you tomorrow for some dredge and maybe another round of this. Okay. Bye-bye.